of that. I, uh, I mean, you don't have classes for a little while, right? Yeah. I not. I hope they're not next week. I actually don't know when they start. Let me see. <laughs> uh, as we get that figured out, let's go ahead and move over to the game reveal screen. Everybody is going to be pretty thrilled with this. Uh, would you call this game a classic? Um, it could be. I mean, it's, it's a great sequel. Okay, it, it is a sequel. Yeah. Just a second, I'm looking up when my classes start. January 6th, I'm fine. I'm fine until then. Okay, I've got time. So yes, the game coming up today is indeed going to be a sequel. Who chose it? Well, as it turns out, we had a little collaboration with one of our previous players. Uh, Xandra decided to uh, put some work into this, and I believe we have something extra special for everybody here. We do. So let's see if Xandra decides to hop in. Maybe. She might be too scared because of the last game that we gave. I wouldn't blame her. It was a it was a terrifying game. Hello there, Xandra. Hello. Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you here. <laughs> uh, and honestly, I haven't said what the game is yet. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, so where did you find this game? Uh, okay, so uh, I once had this game. I've had this game actually for like almost twenty years now. Twenty but years. At some point, yeah, I lost. I lost everything. I lost, like, in some of, like, the machine transfers and stuff, I just lost, like, some stuff here and there, but I lost this game entirely. Like, I, I had the first one. I had whatever was made of, like, ended up being released of the third one, but I, I completely lost this one. However, I was chatting with some folks in some, like, old games forum, and they managed to, like, point me to an archive, the internet archive of an old place called Silky's Wall, where folks would just share click-and-play games and that one was on there. And so that's how I was able to finally get my hands on it once more after like more than a decade and a half of like not having it anymore. Oh, I love it. Let me reveal it. This is the sequel, The Quantum Blade 2. And what's so special about this, Zandra? This is the second game I ever made. <laughs> I am so happy. Yeah. It's it's kind of, it's <clears throat> teenage Sandra was was like just was just full of heart but gosh was had still like a lot to learn about making games teenage Sandra I'm so thankful that you exist so big question here because I'm gonna work on capturing this do I capture the whole blue part around the title screen here like oh Yes, yes, you should, because uh, this was made in click and play and has been uh, basically imported and re-exported via um, like a click team studio. And uh, that means that there's going to be some of the interstitials are like JPEGs. So uh, <laughs> it will resize. It used to resize the window accordingly. Now it doesn't. So I think this is the bigger, the biggest the window gets. And then like the the actual like there's there's gonna oh be like gosh. filler color in the border but i think that should be like the right size you uh it might get a little bit weird because i think on the title screen there's like the it, there's like the 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 you know the option bar with like file menu stuff like that that's the only time it appears it vanishes for the rest of the game so there might be some like wiggle room vertically so just something to keep in mind. I think the UI okay. gets pretty close up to the top. This is the only screen you can input a password also, by the way. Gotcha. No other screen shows this menu for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> by the way, I apologize for the music stopping there. It turns out that uh, in order to watch Author Blue's stream and not have it look all glitchy on me, I had to enable hardware acceleration on Chrome. Thank you, Chrome. And that makes it so that I can't capture the game. So I'm back. I think. Oh my gosh. Hey. This is I'm, going to I'm be so amazing, though. Yeah. Uh, it's wonderful. 
so I, I do have to ask, how long do you think it'll take? Do you think the players have any chance of beating your game? Uh, it is possible, uh, because there's passwords. But, um, like, this game, I didn't know about a lot of stuff. I didn't know how you make, like, damage work. Your character has, like, a life bar, but still takes damage per frame. There's like, sometimes when you die, I just make him respawn at, at one arbitrary point in the level. You don't get invincibility frames. Oh, why would like, you? It is, a, it is entirely possible to just die instantly, like almost randomly, but thankfully, you you know, you get passwords, but there, you need to do the whole, like a bunch of levels before you get like the boss and that gives you the password for the next part. And it is possible to be beat. I think, like, uh, if you just played perfectly and was lucky, you could you do this, like, fairly quickly. Like, <laughs> at least I'm thinking, like, I don't know, like, maybe 20 minutes, half hour, I figure. But first time playing? No way. I don't I don't think so. Maybe. I mean, I did, I did like, uh, put it in end. I, I did. I, I played for about 20 minutes to make sure it worked after you recompiled it for us. And uh, I think I made it to the third level. Okay. Like third boss, third world, or...? No, no, no. Oh. Like, like the third screen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, <Yeah>. what? <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I... I... Oh. So, so what, apparently, from my understanding, one of the consequences from the new um, program, whatever you used to compile it this time, Sanders, sped it up. Oh, no! Uh, some... <laughs> and, and, I mean, it's still playable, but it, 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 it's difficult. Oh, I'm excited. Okay. This makes it oh. even better. Okay. Yeah. It, it is, okay. It is, the, the way I've described it is this is simultaneously one of the worst things I've seen on Cuso Grande and one of the most glorious things I've seen on Cuso Grande. It's fantastic. <laughs> I'm so I, glad. I, I legitimately enjoy it. Aw, uh, that, that means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Corn Dan, those are kind words. I think I'm going to enjoy the pain and suffering that we're about to there, inflict there is on the players. A lot of, there's a lot of pain and suffering. <laughs> Perfect. That's what I like to hear. I'm I'm all for that. Okay, I believe I have things captured. So everybody, you should remember this grand final is the best two out of three. That means that they have a few games to suffer through. If we do have somebody manage to uh, win two of the matches, I'm going to try to make them play a third one. I really hope we play the third one. Oh, same here. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll see. You know, we'll see how they're feeling after that because they may be uh, uh, just in tears for better or for worse, you know? Oh, my gosh. Okay. Well... The game is beautiful, but <laughs> actually, I can't really see much on it, so I don't know. We'll find oh, out if it's beautiful. Oh, but... it's if the face. It depends on if you if like folks just like tab through the uh, intro or not. But like there there will be a little bit of like a sneak peek at what the game looks like. Should we tell them to play the intro? I you know why not? Like maybe just like let them. Yeah, uh, like. Uh, there's, there's a, by, okay. Teenage me was into lore. There's like a, a, a few screens worth of like text. So it depends if you like, ah, just like maybe spend like, I don't know, 10 seconds on each screen or something. It's like, it depends. Or just have one person just like, just, just give a little bit of an idea. But yeah, it's, there's, there's a lot of text and it's real bad. Ever since he'd grabbed that sword, Xavier had been thrown from one world to the next in a mad quest to find out what was going on from one crazy setting. Oh, oh well. Here. What? Down here? Yeah, it's... <laughs> was that was that actually a voice from the game? Oh, was it? Oh, I didn't hear. I don't know. Cold heat, vegetation, and electricity. Shade. Yeah. <laughs> oh, geez. Okay, no copyright strikes here. We're totally original music, Sandra. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I just grabbed whatever at the time. I'll just, I just grab some like MIDI files and. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> He's this ready. He's ready. 
Look at Xavier. He's gonna go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's you know I figured like the first game your 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 sprite was like very small. I figured the second one, hey, bigger is better, right? Let's just make it as big as I can. So, yeah. Yeah, good. It's I, wonderful. I'd say good thinking, but I don't know. Okay, he's <laughs> lead him to the next element world. So, which world are we going to? That's a good question. This I, I, I imagine I saw like a couple of episodes in Quantum Leap and said, hey, yeah, like a sword that just makes you like go through various worlds. That that sounds interesting. And you know, you know what's not tried like uh, completely like done already? Elements. Let's just go with elements. I think I think for the first one, it was like fire, earth, air, water. And this one, like, OK, what are some others, I guess, in the middle, like cold electricity? I like vegetation like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty fun. Vegetables. That's like the <laughs> Troll 2 world, okay? <laughs> I am one with the vegetable world. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. does it move on from here, or do we just wait? Uh, at some point, okay. Uh, yeah, you click, and the game just starts. Go, and it just it just goes. So when you die, people can just like just click back to this point. But yeah, there's not really any like any sort of like timer. Like I said, it's just like not just I just dump you into like the stage. Here you go. Good luck. Did you did you give them like a uh, instructions or something or? Um, I, I I told them the most bare of bare instructions. Right. Okay. Bare. Mostly bare. because it's all I knew. Yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah. It's like it's just shift to jump, control to strike, and there's like some other stuff you figure out maybe. Well, well, so so all I knew, like all I all I was told when I tested it was jump and swing and move. So yep. that's all I gave them. So if they figure something else out, great. Hey, cool. yeah, but wish, they're not getting it. Wish the players <laughs> luck, by the way. And chat, I want you to spam all of your most stereotypical RPG emotes because I have a feeling we have a little inspiration from that. Spam away. Best of luck. As soon as we start, I will be uh, begin our timer. That's not the word that I was meaning to come out, but it did. I will begin our timer as soon as there's movement. Oh. <laughs> okay, this is... What? What is with this? <laughs> uh, okay, so... Yeah, Teen Me was like just really like ah, just just like just make gruesome death animations. Why not? Okay, cool. Was someone, that a someone... full game over in ten seconds? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, it was. oh no. So I try to make sure no enemies sort of get in the corner where you spawn, but if they do, you just keep respawning on them and dying. Okay, That's good. You can happens. kill them. It looks like Andy is to the third screen. To the fourth, Andy is making quick progress here. My problem was I always had them spot on me. Oh no, Andy! Oh well, <laughs> that didn't last too much longer. Folks are getting stuck in the swinging animation way more than I figured they. Oh well, okay. Is it good to get stuck? I don't think so. <laughs> it's just kind. Of, it, it it makes your hitbox weird, and I'm not sure. Okay, so technically. Uh, the way the way Click Studio works is I and this is very bad, uh, like because I didn't know any better. Is basically if if like Xavier touches an enemy while Xavier is in the swinging the sword animation, the enemy dies. Otherwise, Xavier takes a hit. You technically have like a health bar of three hits, but once again, you take one point of damage per frame. So, oh. Dark Gate. That... Uh oh. What world is this? Okay, so uh, that was just the intro. Now, now this is the actual proper first world. Did you make it this far, Corn Dan? No. How no, long did you play? Like, like twenty minutes. <laughs> oh I, I my mean, gosh! I mostly was playing was does this work? Does everything do what it's supposed to? All of those things. I'm so happy. And, and I literally got like like every time I go to like the second area, those balls would spawn on me. I'm so sorry. 
Oh, it's uh, fine. I mean, it just happens. Mm. Oh, oh, I think Andy just found one of the one of the abilities you get. Uh, if you if so if you uh, so like you know it's like uh, one button to jump, one button to to attack, and if you hit both at once, you do one of the abilities that you earned in the first game. Because I figured, hey, why do why don't we just let you keep it all the abilities you earned in the first game? And that's basically you get a. Uh, 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 sort of a fire uppercut thing. Ooh, but okay. The, the trick is, uh, because I didn't know any better, the the uh, like the the action is if you press both of them at the same time, which means on the same frame. Otherwise, it doesn't work. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, so uh, Chad is asking if the D who made the Demon Rush made this, and no, Xandra, who is commentating <laughs> right now. Xandra made this. So, so what you're saying is the Z made this? The Z made it, yeah. <laughs> this is I, so charming. Oh, oh, also, by the way, there was a soft lock in this version because it's entirely possible if you're like just swinging this. Yeah, okay, Andy demonstrated it. Uh, it's entirely possible to, if you're like doing, if you're swinging your sword at just the right time, to leave the frame <laughs> while you're transitioning from one frame of animation to the other one, and that makes you like actually ex <laughs> it makes you ex exit the 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 screen without the game killing you. So you just fall forever in our soft block. So I basically added an extra event in the game that says, uh, if you're outside the game, just die. Oh, good. Yeah. I like that. Uh, by the way, I, I really like that, you know, a few of our Kusoge players, uh, in fact, grew up making Kusoge and didn't even know as a kid that's what they were making. Yep. Yep. But I, turns out, I'm, I'm glad that my games can like, get, like, a second life as, like, Kus Kusoge, like, my father. You know, this actually, like, how old were you? I was 16 years old. This is pretty dang good for a 16-year-old putting together a project. Yeah. Well, well, thank you. Yeah, like, I, I, my, my parents got me click and play for my birthday, and I figured, oh, my gosh, I can finally make games. And, yeah, just drew stuff. And so for Quantum Blade 1, I didn't know you could just copy and paste levels. So I basically just reprogrammed every level from scratch every time. For oh, this one, no. I, yeah. <laughs> for, for this one, I, I kind of realized, oh, you can just copy paste levels, so I just did that. This is why a lot of the levels are very, very similar. I love it. Oh, jeez. Oh, okay, Andy is doing okay-ish here. Uh, so it looks like there is health in this, but I'm not completely sure how you get health or how that works so... at all. I don't think health is refreshed between levels. I don't think you can actually ever heal, uh, but they they are some lives in there somewhere. Oh my! It's like gosh. every every hundred points wow. is, a, is a life. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, I, oh that's okay. cool. You didn't know that? Nice. No, I forgot so, about that. I, I totally didn't know that there was actually a health bar. Like I saw there was a health bar, but it didn't matter because every time I got hit, I took like twenty points of damage. Right, because I would just take damage every single frame. Yep. So I didn't actually know until I started seeing their health go down that that the health bar actually worked. Yep, it it works technically. I guess it worked well enough for me back then. Yeah, Andy <laughs> is definitely using that flame jump, and that is the right way to proceed right now. Oh yeah, that's that's the good one. Like that's the. Uh... The, the you really need that ability, and I'm kind of sad I, you know, didn't bother telling the player or making it work better. Also, oh, did you know you have a grappling hook? What? In this game. Yeah, it's, it doesn't actually grapple anything. It's just like, he, uh, Xavier has a grappling hook, and he basically just, like, <laughs> swings it around himself. Uh, oh my gosh. To do a sort of a, it's a great defensive move. You need to press down and attack, again, on the same frame to use it. So and I, I saw it in the lore and then never found out how to use it. So I just assumed it was like lore. Yep. Nope. No, it's no. Uh, it's actually, it's actually Glitch Witch thing. did just... do the fire jump. She's seen it now. I think she's nice. eventually going to figure out how to do it uh, rather than just seeing it. Yeah. And, and true to form in this one, every time you defeat a boss, you get a new power too. But sometimes it's just 
uh, like a, a, a buff to one of your existing abilities. Does the game tell you that you got a new power? Oh yeah, sure. I mean, if you if you read the little like lore box, it tells you. It's it's the one that gives you the password, so hopefully you're gonna like. Good gosh. Yeah, it looks like Glitch Witch is putting together that she glowed red, she's saying in Discord, and she's like, something happened. Andy knows this. Uh, I don't think Andy is going to share that information. I, I understand that position, honestly. It is it is kind of an... Gosh, I, I, I must have like put some sort of text file somewhere with the controls. Maybe I can dig it up at some point. Oh my gosh. Uh, this level is not okay. No, and there's so many more. I uh, I think there's like 10 levels per world or something. And yeah, I, I, I'm, okay, so I have what? never been good at AI. You know, whatever, it's automatic. It's not intelligence, but it's automatic. Yeah, so I just I just figured I just did the thing which was very popular in uh, click and play circles at the time, which was called just <laughs> shoot the bouncing ball or hit the bouncing ball. So you just make bouncing balls and you just hit them and that's it. That's and sometimes you make a weird chair level. I don't know what I was thinking there, but it's a good level. I like it. You know what? I had click and play as a kid. That's totally what you did. Yep. Shoot the bouncing ball. It's it's the thing. I wonder. Oh, oh it, hey, okay. Uh oh, Andy. For Funny thing, did you know why Andy kept bouncing up when, like, shooting, when, like, striking that, that platform on the side? Why? It's because when you're jumping, your hitbox is your pixels. Like, click and play doesn't know what feet are. So, while if you're jumping uh -oh. and swinging the sword, Oh, no. That... Andy. <gasps> oh, gosh. Okay. I like, think we have whoa. our first soft lock of the game. Uh... I think I think he can probably figure. We'll figure we'll see. Out we'll see if he can get out. Yeah, because like I think right he's now, actually it's... caught in the wall. Yeah, because it's, it's his entire body is a hitbox. So every, like the, the game thinks every single pixel is feet. So like. Oh oh if... oh! Maybe he's out. He's fallen a little bit. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, unfortunately, oh, he maybe. is dying or taking a lot of damage there. Okay, just again, lodging again. himself in the wall and managing to do a, a good amount of damage. So getting stuck in the wall on purpose this time. Oh, by the way, that small little orb he just picked up, that's a life. Oh, okay, so... Sometimes I'm nice and I just give, like, extra life every now and then. Oh, that's so nice of you, Xandra. So, question. Obviously, we're on a snowy world, and the first world was Spike World. How many worlds are there? Four? So, there's four worlds. However, the Spike Ball thing, that's just the path to each world. You get five levels <gasps> of these. Oh, my gosh. Boss time. Boss time. Okay. Well, not for long. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so wonderful. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, no. Katana flight. Is that what I it didn't... said? Okay, so uh, that's like the final boss uses a bunch of like uh, sword themed attacks. I don't know why one of these like sounds is playing during the intro. I have no clue. I like it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, Katana slice. Yes, Listar has it in the chat. Yes. Katana yes, slice. Yeah, the, the, I, I reused one of the uh, more edgelordy uh, bosses from the first game, uh, Slash, who just, like, throws out weapons in, in different patterns. So I just want everybody to know today's match is the best two out of three. Right now, Andy is definitely in the lead, having made it to the boss of the Ice Kingdom. This is, this is a lot. Okay, Glitch Witch, by the way, in Discord is asking the right questions. I don't think she's expecting a response, but she is asking, why do I light on fire sometimes? Yeah, yeah, that is, that is, um, 
I, I forget what the name of the boss was. There was a, a fire theme boss in the first one that gave you this power. I forget what the other... You get three other powers, right? You get... Right, the fact that you have a health bar, that's from the first boss in the game, in the first one. You get the... the you didn't have a health thing. bar before the first boss? No, no, no. Uh, the first game, like, before the first boss, it was just, like, one hit, you die. And the first boss gives you uh, uh, an additional health point. But, again, you take damage on every frame, so... You know. Oh, baby. I only figured out invincibility frames recently. Also, I think someone asked, like, how long would it take for me to make this game today? And, like, this would be pretty quick. I think in a day I could... Like, if I had the assets, I could probably redo this. I could make a way better one in a week. Oh, that's pretty but cool. There, there oh! is something charming about it as it is, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad. I... I should, I should I should look into my folder of the other ones to see which ones could like be <laughs> held over because like I, I have the first one I also made a uh, I tried to make different I like sequels to this as like an RPG as different things uh, the one I actually finished a, a breakout RPG game in this universe where you had like you know it's like breakout you bounce blocks but also it's a vertically scrolling RPG and I made like I've I played like, I've played a game I, like I, that I before. Really? Yeah, on, on Super Famicom. I'm trying to remember what it was. Uh, because I also managed to glitch it out and end up, like, scrolling through the level three times. And Oh, no. oh. Yeah, Fire Striker. I think that was it. Oh, I have to look it up. Because, yeah, that was, like, the, the, the one, the, that, that Breakout RPG one was, like, one of the other, uh, probably the last click-and-play game I ever made and completely, like, finished. I even, I sent it to Epic Games at the time. Like, Epic Mega Games. Like, hey, I made this game. Would you like to, like, publish it? And they sent me a very nice rejection letter with, like, a little folder and everything. It says, no, thank Aww. you so much, but this is just not for us. And the, the name of that game also was uh, Quantum Break. So... History would oh, be no. quite different if I had been released, just for copyright purposes. Well, you could have just changed the name. I like, could have. Oh, no. Yeah, you should have suggested that. Can we just change the name? <laughs> no, we're not going to get muted for having Final Fantasy music. This is twitch.tv.com, and <laughs> it's about video games, so we're fine. Okay. Yeah, I, I would we'll only get so. muted when we go onto YouTube. Yeah. No, we won't. Even that. Yeah. Not happening. Y y yeah, yeah, we will. I I I've done enough YouTube work lately on both Big Bad Gameathon and RPG Limit Break to know like which games like tend to get hit with a mute button. Whatever. Whatever. Also, I just want to say, I just love how there's technically a crouch in this game. I'm not sure if it's any use, but also since, again, your whole, like, sprite is your hitbox, I figured, oh, this, this crouch doesn't really work because your sword can still be hit and kill you. So I made the sword just bend over your head to take up less space. Yeah, I think Cat is starting to realize that the flamey jump is a thing. Uh, and she's saying she's not crazy. Yeah. Well, she might be crazy, but not not because of that. Not because of the fire jump. That's genuinely right. a thing you can do in this game. I love occasionally just hearing a sound effect that I'm like, I don't know why there is a sound effect here, but there are voice lines occasionally, and it's so good. Yeah, those 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 voice lines are uh, so, like if they're like very quick sound effect or just like uh, barks, those tend to be just like taken from the click and play sound library. If anyone is saying something, that is teenage Zandra, <gasps> like recording through sound recorder with like uh, multiple passes of like bass booster and like making the the voice sound deeper and echoey and stuff like that. Oh my gosh, I love it. It's pretty wonderful. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're enjoying it. I'm really enjoying this. Yeah. What about that weep? That's probably click and play, is what I'd say. The what? I don't know what he says. It's like weak, sweet. Maybe it's sweet. 
Oh, maybe. Actually, that might be. Oh, it might be sweet. That might be one of the, uh, like, um, tapped in uh, sound effects. Gosh, I was just so mean. Why would I do this? This is pretty oh, well. cruel. See, like, I, I really gave up on level design. Oh my gosh, the hitbox is so big. <laughs> yeah, you really do want to let the death animation play out when you're fighting. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> I mean, at least Andy is getting multiple attempts at this. Uh, that is mm -hmm. going to make a pretty big difference. Like, honestly, yeah, as long as he can get through the early stages and then figure out a strategy against the boss, that is going to help. Is that the final boss? That is the first boss. <laughs> I hope that helps, chat. Yeah, there's, uh, there's four worlds. Each one has a boss. Uh, between each world, you have those, like, you have five stages of, like, those giant spiky ball things. And uh, each boss gives you an ability, technically, and uh, I think there's an extra final boss after the four bosses, just because. I really hope Glitch Witch figures out how to use the, the fire ability, because that will make such a huge difference. I wonder what happens to the counter when you get past the number of lives it can display. <laughs> I don't know. It's your game. Yeah, eh. I, I, I forget how click and play does it. Maybe at some point you're just like, ah, it just like sticks to the maximum or it just glitches out. Gosh, how are you even supposed to get back up there? I have no idea. Oh, no! Oh, yeah, you know, clip through the ceiling. That's the way. So... I also like the... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I, I wonder, is this game actually beatable? I beat it. I mean, no, technically, let's say Teenage Sandra beat it. Uh, oh, okay. It is, it is technically... You get a bunch of lives. Eventually, if you just figure out, like, the tactic, you can... You can do it. I I forget how I beat each boss, but I, I like they have to be beatable, otherwise I wouldn't have like put the game out because I would have been laughed out of like the the circles. The click the whatever. click and play community. Yeah, the click and the click and play. Oh my gosh! Andy! Oh wow, that, that fire jump just does the work against the ice boss. Well I mean it's an ice boss, right? I I love that this works. Oh, there we go. Bam. Ooh, password. Yep. That's good. Also, oh, yeah, if you didn't know how to do the grappling hook, now you know. Down plus two. Wait, like the keyboard number two? Oh, no, button one and button two are like shift and control. You can change them in the options if you want. I guess you could. Yeah. Oh yeah. Here you go. So like, yeah, five more, five more levels of this. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, and he figured out the the grappling hook. I don't know what it being frozen adds. Like, I honestly don't know how different it is, but maybe it actually does damage. I think the grappling hook might just like bounce enemies back if it's not on ice. But uh. after you beat Glacia, then then it starts actually doing damage. Uh oh. Oh, you've got oh, a cross in the middle. Wow. This would be censored by uh, Nintendo USA back when you made this. You're getting edgy. Oh, no. Okay, so we're, we're in the Steam world now. The Steam world? Yes. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, Are copyright we... issues here. Oh no! Yeah, we gotta fight sad steam clouds. <laughs> oh, I no. love seeing Andy take that many hits. <laughs> yeah, it's because you you really gotta let the anim the death animation play out until the enemies leave your spawning point. That hopefully you remember where it is on the screen. 
it's 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 a great this is a great series of uh you know design lessons like you know in Don't. invincibility frames yeah you know what I'm still always happy that there are teens who are able to make things like this, though. Like, yeah, click and play, probably not the most sophisticated thing, but at the same time, it got you started into something that was your passion, you know? Yeah, I'm, it's just, like, that's the, it's also why I do, uh, I'm so excited about game, like, uh, programs like Construct, which are, like, uh, updated versions of this which let you uh, make rapid prototypes and create just fully functioning games very quickly. I've been on like some streams and stuff where I just like, like sit down with people and just make a game in two hours based Ooh. on their suggestions. And because it's, it's so powerful, like this stuff like this is tricky to make like a fully, you know, releasable game. It doesn't have the tools that the other big engines has, but it's just so quick and so easy to make games in this that it's really motivating. And it like makes you stoked and, and happy to like make more games. See, it's just... I need to make something like this. Andy is on to the fire boss. Oh yeah, nice. That's, uh, I, think, I think that's Steamheim for some well, reason. Well, okay, Andy's dead. <laughs> Oh no. Steamheim. Oh, yep. You've really got to let the death animation play out. That's your like that's that's your invincibility frame while you're dying. So basically it looks like Glitchwitch needs to learn the fire jump and Andy needs to learn how to let the death play out. Yep. Got to chill when you're dying. Also, Andy missed the one uh, the one part where a password could be inputted. Uh -oh. Now needs to reset to get back to that point. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Zan Andy is a little bit angry about you. Well, he could die, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, they should know that you can only input passwords on the title screen. That's an important thing to tell them. Okay. Because that's that's a bug. That's an honest to goodness bug in the uh, in in whatever I used in uh, Click Team Studio. Like, okay, hopefully I think I think Andy figured it out. Whew. Okay, I'm I'm glad. There's no, oh, by I, the way, no, that that's something they should know. Yeah, oh. I would agree. Okay. Also, uh, there are passwords like before each boss i just don't tell the player at any point oh they're dev passwords yep just for me because so you, i could you're like... a big cheater xandra <laughs> <laughs> yep there's also there's okay i i I, don't, I forget if i use if i gave that password out at the end that feels like a thing i would do but there is a way to start the game with a bunch more lives and there's a special password that puts you into a room full of lives that then takes you to the first level level I put that in as a, I need to play test. Let's just make my life easier thing. But I honestly forget. Maybe I just give it out at the end. Like, hey, you want to play this game again, but slightly easier? Here you go. Aw. <laughs> Wait, you give them the easy version after they beat it. That's so yeah, kind of weird. you. <laughs> I'm really glad that uh, that we get something like this, though. It looks like Andy is trying to use the grappling hook, having a bit of a hard time. It's, yeah, it's, it's tricky, and I'm not even sure if it's any use. Also, someone in, in chat mentions, like, I bet, it, like, Lord Dalek bets that I implemented the Konami code. Believe me, I tried, but there was no <laughs> way I could make that work. Are you serious? Yeah, it was just way too complex for, like, teenage Xandra to figure out how to do this with Quick and Play. Now I know. I, I know how I do it, but back then it was like just too many like levels of dev ahead of what I could do. I love it. I love it so much. Like, I, I want to make a crappy game. I really do. Yeah. Like, you you have to teach me one day. We need oh, to get okay, together yeah. and just make a really crappy game in like an hour or two. Yeah, I would be, like, that's a thing I've legit done in game design class, and I would be happy to just do a stream, like, yes, I will teach you how to make 
a crappy, like a functioning game in a couple of hours. That yes. Is absolutely. Let's do it. Okay, I'm 100% yeah. down for that. Uh, sometime I'll before next Cusa Grande, which, by the way, everybody, <laughs> Cuso 5 is now open for applications. You can head to our Discord. I've got the link in the announcements, and uh, Ahmad is probably going to drop it in a little bit is what I would expect. Please come join. We are allowing people to join up until January 15th. Well, I'm so excited. Through January 15th. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Xandra, you did really well this tournament. Like, coming in third place is not bad at all, especially for your first time playing this. Like, it, it was great. Seriously. I'm so glad. I'm like, I was just, I was just, I'm so excited I could be, like, part of this. Oh no, Andy. Uh, Glitch Witch got something, like, one of the enemies stuck in a place that looked impossible to get but it got oh, freed so weird. that's good oh yeah a, a helpful little icicle went and freed a friend that's so good they're just we're looking out for each other also sometimes the enemies bounce off your sword and i'm not sure why huh also i do want to say you know thank you everybody who has stuck with us for a long time i've seen people recently uh, complaining about tournaments that stretch out for a month uh, <laughs> because it's so long. <laughs> and then we're like, oh, well, well, we got about a year to do this. Oh. I, I, I feel there's a, a difference there, right? You know, it, it's one thing if you go to watch a tournament for a month and it's, you know, Zelda every day, multiple times a day for a month. Whereas this, you show up every weekend for a year and even though it's the same tournament, who knows what you're going to get. Well, not only that, but you're not playing every week. So that, that helps you breathe a little bit. Yeah. So but I, I mean, this is this is a nice respite from, you know, Super Metroid or Link to the Past. I don't know. This is better than Super Metroid. Look at this game. <laughs> Freaking crap. Metroid could have learned a few things from this, like have a fire jump. It's about it. Not really many <laughs> other things to learn. <laughs> oh, there we go. There's there's that life. You better... Okay, good. You can actually grab that life. He got having, it. Having the key thrust upon you. Ah. You know what? Chad is saying that he doesn't crawl, but maybe he gets a crawling ability later on. You don't know. You haven't yeah, played this maybe. game. Maybe Teenage Xander figured that out. And also, to give you an idea of the scale of the game, Quantum Blade 1 had this exact screen size, except your character was as tall as one of the tiny little, like, smoke enemies. In Ice oh, Island. nice. By the way, That's we are half an hour in. Uh, Andy is making some pretty significant progress. Now, even if Zan... Uh, e not Xandra, you're not playing. <laughs> Even if Glitch Witch does lose the first round, we've got two other games. We're doing best two out of three. Neither of them have scored yet, but I imagine one of them will uh, with this game. Well, yeah, obviously somebody has to with this game. You don't I, just tie. I, I mean, well, well I, I get all the points. <laughs> wow, Corn Dan. Yeah, Steamheim is rough because you can't really like muscle through him. He's he I mean he's like he's a heat element boss. You can't just use the fire jump against him, and that's like your most useful weapon. Now Andy is saying that he uh, is the hardest boss ever. I have a <laughs> feeling that talking about things like this in the Discord could potentially either make Glitch Witch think that. Well, you know, she probably thinks she's behind, but hopefully it also makes her think maybe there's something I'm missing. And if mm. she is able to put that together just based off of the small clues here, uh, then that would be extremely helpful. She She's done the fire jump a couple times. She just needs to do it a couple more and figure out how to do it reliably. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like, are there any other games that, like give you abilities that only work if you combine buttons like on the frame exactly yeah i mean oh good what 
I'm sure Double Dragon games do that. <laughs> like the the stupid knee jump. I'm not sure if that is oh. frame perfect, but it is hard. Right. I was never able to get that one. Oh, I I can do it almost reliably, but it's four frames. Okay. Yeah, the fact is, what you're seeing Andy do is frame perfect every every time you see the fire. It's frame perfect, <laughs> yeah, or something. <laughs> Something like that. I imagine he's getting tired of mashing. Probably. I have to because he's not just doing it once every time he jumps. He's just sometimes in the middle of a jump catching on fire. Would it be better if I I just like made an, an, a version 1.1 of this where it's easier to, to do the move or it's like, nah, this is fine? I don't know. Mm. It's your game. I, I, I think you have to keep it as is. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. I, I can learn from this and just make better games later. Yeah, maybe for I, the the third game in the trilogy, you can be mm -hmm. a little bit more forgiving. That's the ability from the first boss, the ability to actually have multiple frames. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So I do have a question, Sandra. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite game that you've worked on or made? Oh my gosh. So are we talking about only the games like I made like myself entirely? Uh and Okay, one that you made entirely and one that you worked on. Okay, cuz the um the one I made entirely like it's tricky to pick just one, but it'd probably be uh this dungeon is so cool. That's a freeware game that's up on on my itch. It's uh I made it in construct. It's like it's just very wholesome. It's basically a story of going to hell to find your loved one and bring them back, except everyone's really nice. And all the enemies are like my friends turned into demons. And really the whole combat system is just like trying to find something about each enemy that you like about them and complimenting them until they just get like so flustered they just let you pass. And it's just Aww. like... It's, it's a very wholesome little uh, like dungeon crawler, and it's also like entirely procedurally generated. Though it's different every time you play, even though you don't really have you know reason to do that. So it's just it, it's just like a lot of fun to do. If I'm correct, that was made during a self care jam, I believe. Yes, exactly. I just that was that was like a really a really good jam for me, and it was just it was a it was a, it was an important game. I got to show it off also at a uh, at an event at some point of like. Uh, uh, just uh, small game projects. Oh, that's awesome! So that's this dungeon is so cool. Yeah, uh, and the my my favorite game that I've worked on, but I didn't make completely, was Chariot. That's the game that basically like started everything, and it's uh it's like it just recently got like a extremely like big sale on uh on the Switch. It's also on Steam. It's basically it's it's a it's a story. It's a, it's a platformer where you you and a second player are like dragging around a big wheeled platform on ropes and you use it to do tricks and, i've wanted and, uh, to play that but i haven't yep yep that was like i was the game designer the writer and one of the level designers on that one and it was oh like my gosh that's awesome oh uh, okay i need to play that sandra do you <laughs> have anything big coming up that you can talk about oh yes so something so i was in a uh a blind race for Lawnmower, the NES game. Yes, I know and that one. I, I had a like, I loved it so much that I decided I want to make one of these. So I want to make like a, a Lawnmower like, but in like, you know, uh, give the gameplay a little bit of a twist and try different things with it. But that's something I'm working on uh, that I want to like make in the next few months. It'd be like, I, I think it would be like a, a fun way to return to making games and it's just i just love that game so much it's just like i love really elegant games and systems so i'm, oh, I'm yeah. excited that. by the way i'm going to recommend that if you uh, are interested in lawnmower games there's one for the commodore 64 that you should definitely try playing because i'd say it's bad but it's absolutely a blast uh i can't remember hover, what hover? it's called. yeah hover bover Oh yeah, hover bomber. Yeah, I saw that on a. I was watching old gauntlets, and yes. I saw that like it's the one where like I'll just nip and borrow Tom's mower. Yes. Yeah, and then you have a pet dog that you can go have attack 
the other owner or the the, the guy who owns the lawnmower in order to keep him away. <laughs> uh, it's yeah, give it a shot. I love it. it. It's it's very difficult, but it's a lot of fun. Yes, I, that's my kind of game. Okay. Gosh, really At this wanna... point, I'm really not seeing much progress on either side, you know? Andy is consistently getting to the boss of Steam World and then getting destroyed. Glitch, which meanwhile is get making a little progress into the ice world or the snow world, whatever it is. Uh, and then unfortunately taking deaths because she doesn't know about the fire jump. Sandra, that, that's something you need to learn with game design. <laughs> you know, tell people the controls. Yep, yep. Fine. When yeah, when I when I give people like one of my old games, that's be so good. I need to like dig up the doc text file. I may I may have it somewhere. It probably has a bunch of like extremely extremely teenage lore in it. But I'm actually completely fine that you didn't because Wait, you, you, honestly, you know what? yeah, it's Kuso Grande. They get what they get. <laughs> No, what you got to do in these blind matches is uh, essentially, you know, if you see something weird happen or something that you can't explain, try to figure out what that's doing, especially if you're stuck, because it might end up being extremely helpful. That's part of the part of the trick for getting through some of these matches. And remember, uh, while most games are designed to like be sensible, there are a few games, especially when they're independent and made by teenagers, uh, <laughs> that have some really dumb rules. Yeah, that's that's like that's what ended up getting me during like my matches. A lot of the time is that sometimes there was just ways to interact with the game that I didn't figure out because I just couldn't think of to try. Like, oh, of course, yeah. I've, there's like moving and pressing this button does nothing, but if I stop and press the button while I'm idle, then it changes the game completely. And that's just not something I would think of. Yeah. So two, two buttons on the same frame, probably not something I would think of. I, I mean, to be fair, in some of those cases, um, Xandra, we're not sure the designers thought of those either. <laughs> fair, yeah, sometimes you just, you know, you can't think of everything. But sometimes it just happens. Oh, yeah. that's something that I always recommend. Always try pressing two buttons at the same time. Uh, you know, if if you don't do it once, uh, it could just be uh, like try, you know, try it a few times in this case because I have a feeling that I might have missed this as well. Because uh, it's a little cruel, Xandra. A little cruel. It's, yeah, it's it's a little bit like, gosh, not even invincibility frames. I wonder if I ever figured out invincibility frames in any of my games. I must have at some point. I mean, how about <laughs> Chariot? Are there iframes in that? No, you don't. You can never get hurt in Chariot. It's not that kind of. A game. So there are no iframes. Okay, you just nope. <laughs> took out the ability to get hurt. Yep. yep. Wow. Wow, Zandra. <laughs> <laughs> how you do it? You know, bro. If if you find right, you're having issues with things, right? You just stop including it. I like that plan. You know, just give up. That's the that's the <laughs> lesson we're learning here. If it doesn't work for you, just give up. Do so. <laughs> can I uh, can I can I point something out that yes. Andy said in uh, in Discord? Please do. Okay, because <laughs> Andy in Discord just said like, I will give Xander approximately fifty cents to get me a rip of the game that lets me rebind controls. You can't rebind controls. It's it's in there. It's in the it's in the options. You just can only access the options on the title screen, and you have to like figure out that that's that's in the menu. Oh yeah, my we, gosh! We, we so didn't you tell them that they could rebind. Okay, well, yeah, yeah, you can. It's like it's it's a it's a click and play game. You can always rebind controls. Just oh how oh okay now okay right yeah. And he just has to hope that that little steam pot will eventually decide to. I down. I almost feel like <laughs> just. Uh, telling him that he owes you 50 cents right now. <laughs> I told him. 
Thank you. <laughs> also, I, I, I'm not sure if someone pointed it out, but like there was a point during the boss fight that Andy was on where one of, because the boss spawns small enemies, because why wouldn't he? Uh, there was a spot where like one of the enemies, the spawned enemies got stuck under the map and would just bounce left and right. And for me, like nowadays I would think, ah, that's that's a really good luck, piece of good luck, because then you have fewer enemies to deal with up top. But that actually doesn't mean that because I don't check the maximum of enemies. You can The boss can just spawn enemies forever if you let him. The game will just slow to a crawl. I didn't know to check that. I was a teen. There's all kinds of possible soft lock situations that I never tested for because I'm just one person. So, you know, it's just, this is a great this Making is a great way one to, like, game by yourself is really hard. I mean, like like Fez had some problems. Mm. Uh, yeah, you actually I don't remember any problems with it. I, I'm sure there are some glitches. A handful. Oh, yeah. it's, it's always been interesting, especially since like I do a lot of a uh, link to the past randomizer. And it's always interesting to see like, oh wow, this is like a pretty big glitch you found in this in this, like, wow, I can't believe like that didn't get tested. Well, it is it is a glitch that took like thousands of people twenty years to find. So I think that's pretty good. There's there's some stuff you just can't test for. And also something I learned during making chariot specifically. There's like some bugs that yeah, this is pretty bad, but no one will probably ever run into it. Oh so yeah, it's if okay. Well, yeah, that's understandable. Is it worth putting all of the resources into fixing something that rarely happens, but may take an extremely long time to fix and could potentially alter all of the physics of everything else? No, it's not worth it. Whatever, if somebody yep. runs into that bug, then cool. They get to brag. Yep. It's, yeah, it's like, that's what producers are for on the team, to tell you, like, yeah, like, either, yes, this worth the effort, like, Nah. Gosh, has, has yeah, Andy but but if you do run ever? into one of those glitches, always remember to tell the devs that they're bad programmers. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I mean, never, never do that because that's no. cruel. Yeah, and also it's always it's there's a lot of times where it's stuff where like oh no like the, the QA team absolutely found the bug. It's just like someone along the line figured out, said like nah, this is not worth making or we just do not have the time to fix it so let's just put out the game and hope for the best oh yeah uh yeah and honestly i'm i wish a lot of devs especially if they're not like game breaking bugs just left it left it as is or at least allowed people to revert to a 1.0 version without uh too many problems or the release version whatever that was uh because there, there's some charm in being able to play through some of the games and have a, you know both an updated version as well as a version that it originally was like I, i'm thinking there are a lot of games that that's why i really hesitate to play modern games because if somebody finds something who knows how long it's going to be there yeah, that's, that's like, I think it was some, like, uh, uh, some talk, especially when it came to, like, Skyrim and stuff, where I learned that some, like, uh, about the concept of, yeah, there's bugs that are in games that people just leave in because they're fun. And that's, Oh, like, for sure. Yeah. If you ever get the opportunity to work, uh, on a major release, add in the option to go back to 1.0, please. Please. <laughs> Yep. Just for Dead us. Dead Cells just did that, actually. Wait, really? Yeah. The the latest patch for Dead Cells gives you the ability to play on every previous patch. That's awesome. And hey, Minecraft does that as well. That's really nice. Yeah. Dead Cells and Minecraft. That's what we've got, kids. <laughs> also, shout out shout out to uh, Past Xandra for making the Steam World background kind of look like a trans flag. Heck yeah. Ooh, very nice. Yep. You almost you almost had a teenage Android. You just just needed to put some stuff together. Sweet. Yeah, I'm I'm just thinking that's the reason why I ran Wolf Quest because Wolf Quest 
version 2.5 is the only bearable version to speedrun. Gosh. So yeah, I gotta, good. I gotta remember the version, letting you play past the version thing. That's, that sounds really important. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and making it easy. Here's the deal. People are going to put work into reverting to a previous version anyway. Uh, I know Fallout 4, for example, uh, because I was going to try to run it, and it was the biggest pain in the butt, but you could get a previous version. It just took hours in order to do that. And then accidentally overrode it with the automatic update. And I was so angry. I was so angry. Sandra! <laughs> so well, in, in, at least in your defense, Fallout 4 is not as broken as Fallout 76 is. Well, okay, that's good. So, everybody, just to catch you up, Andy is definitely in the lead, having made it to the boss on the Steam World. Glitch Witch has not quite made it to the boss of the Ice World. Uh, so, like, honestly, at this point, it's going to be very difficult for Glitch Witch to catch up, unless she... Oh, she apparently did make it to the boss. Sorry. I lied. Xandra, I have a hard time paying attention sometimes. I don't know if you knew that. It's 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 a tricky one. Also, yeah, I see Andy <laughs> managed to get out of bounds without dying, but thankfully I have the that little belt and suspender solution that kills you if you get too far out of bounds. So, Glitch Witch is essentially saying, my favorite part of this game is that I've never died to something I felt I did wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. The thing is, like... I completely understand that. It's... Oh my gosh. Okay, here's the deal. Fallout 3 I loved, Fallout New Vegas I loved, but I do want to play Fallout 1 and 2. This has nothing to do with Fallout other than, uh, like, the Fallout that we're going to get from the players after uh, the hour of this game. <laughs> but, yeah, give New Vegas the shot. I mm. would recommend it. New, and, New Vegas and... is, is probably the best 3D Fallout. Probably my, my, like, Fallout 1 and 2 are, like, incredible games, but I always appreciated that in Fallout 2, there was a place, a random place you could find out if you were just kind of, like, a, a lucky break as a random encounter, and it was called the Cafe of Broken Dreams, and you could basically speak to all the features that never made it into the first two games. Oh, no. It was like really, so, really interesting. Of like, oh yeah, I'm the I'm 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 the redhead lady. I was supposed to be the player in the first one, but nope, they went with like the brunette instead. Ah oh, well. Oh, I love it. <laughs> uh, the if you if you really like Fallout One and Two, Chris Avalon put together years and years ago. Uh, what's called the Fallout Bible. Yeah. And it's walked through a lot of the various things that they did and didn't do. Right, and it was all basically it started off as like an FAQ from right, like just answering questions from players on why they did certain things. And so it really goes into a lot of some of the designs they made and some of the extra lore that didn't always make it into the games. Oh yeah, it looks like the players of this game are commenting in Discord. By the way, you can tell that players uh are a little bit frustrated with the game with the amount that they talk in Discord. And let me just say, <laughs> Xandra, there's been quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh. No, you're not. Yeah. This is great. I love this. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm... I, I, I love this comment here, right, from Andy. I still don't know how the health system works. And Glitch which just responds, excuse me, the what system? <laughs> Yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's just sometimes I get hit and I don't die. I don't know. Well, we've got eight and a half minutes left. Uh, just so you know, if I get quiet for any reason, it's because uh, I am working on getting my mother-in-law to the bus stop. Uh, I'll let you know if I actually have to leave the computer in order to do this, but... 
Uh, yeah, right now I gotta start working on it. <laughs> Welcome to my life today. <laughs> I hope that works out. <laughs> Expediently. Ah, uh, same. She got us all sick. She got. She brought a cold. Okay. But it's not contagious. Well, she said it wasn't contagious. And I love that last night. <sighs> I shouldn't say this too loud because she might hear. Uh, she, like, was holding a piece of toast and stuck it out to me. And she's like, do you want this? I didn't touch it. And I'm like, you're literally holding this in your hand right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I pointed that out. She's like, well, I washed my hands. <laughs> and I'm like, you were just eating. Never mind. It, it was really funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Gosh, I don't remember like the the Steamheim, like the hot the fire dude being so hard. But then I don't remember a lot of things about this game. I can't did did any ducking somehow make him invincible at some point? I don't think so. Huh. Because the, the, the so the whole way the the health system works in this game, if it's all collision based, if an enemy collides with the player, you take one point of damage and the enemy bounces away. But a lot of the time, uh, the enemy doesn't, and then you just die. So it's like that point, like uh, Glitch Witch just had it happen. Enemy bounced off of her, and it just dealt one point of damage. But the if you crouch or if you do anything to change your animation in a dramatic way, which is usually done by like changing your animation entirely, which is what crouching does, if that makes it so that the enemy doesn't actually collide with you but just ends up overlapping your sprite, then nothing happens because they're not colliding with you. And the game only checks for collisions, not for overlapping. So what you're saying is if you were crouching and like a sprite ended up where your head was and then you like got up and now it's just in your head you would take no damage uh theoretically the game only checks for collisions and that ends up being very weird i, I don't use this sort of thing anymore because it's just so like unreliable <laughs> also andy says like why can't we play the cool amazon from the game over screen instead of sir dies a lot and like yeah, actually, that would have been like, I, I set up, like, Pass and Sandra set up a way better game in the game over screen. Well, then future Sandra should make the, um, <laughs> the game from the game over screen. Hmm. I'd play it. <laughs> I, I mean, that sounds like Quantum Blade 3 right there. It does. I don't know why I ever latched onto this idea and decided to make like a bunch of games. It feels like this is sort of like the uh, game dev uh, game dev story plot of my own life. Yeah, just make sequels. Just make sequels in every single genre. Why not? I, I made a very anime protagonist. Let's just keep using it. I mean, you got to make sure you can you can make good use of those art assets. Mm, I'm, art I'm kind of. For especially considering the, the games we have in Kusa Grande, these are really good. I'm really, I'm really happy to see that. I'm really happy to hear that. It's it, also like, I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed that we probably won't see the boss of like the third world because you fight a giant like, uh, can I say what it is? Is that okay? Sure. You, you fight a giant I'm... snake lady and who's like in multiple parts and goes into the background and like has like parts coming into the foreground that you fight with. Like I, I put a lot of effort into that boss. But also, it's, this game is so hard. Gosh. I, I mean, it is not surprising me one bit that Glitch Witch not knowing about the, the fire um, jump being stuck on those ice, um, the, the ice mm. world. Yep, I'm pretty sure I would just like, uh, that's the move I would use constantly, which probably should have you know, told me something about the game I was making. All right, I believe in Andy. I believe in Andy's ability to defeat this boss. It's really about like, you know, managing the the spawns and never staying too close to him because 
he will at some points shoot. Oh wow, he just. I was about yeah, to say he he periodically shoots out big flame things, but no, sometimes he just shoots four at a time for no reason. All right. Well, I, I mean that that happens, right? You know what? If I had the ability to shoot out flame things, I'd want to shoot out as many as I could too. Yeah. Why would you like? I don't know. Why would you pace? Like, what would you give? Yeah, the 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 person attacking you a good time. Right. So I'm I'm kind of wondering what is like these are obviously like you're fighting people. Like they obviously have like, you know, lives and such. Like why are they just hanging out in these on these platforms in the middle of nowhere? Well waiting for you to come by. Maybe maybe that's their job. Oh gosh, what a bad job. I I, I don't know. I mean I guess it depends on on how often like heroes would show up, right? Maybe it's a pretty sweet gig. If you only have to like do something like once a year or something, right? And the rest of your day is just sitting around lounging about, could be a sweet gig. Could be, yeah. It's I guess it depends on what you're doing, because like I, at least in Mega Man, the boss, the boss, uh, the robot masters always like drop in from above. So you have to figure, oh, they're just like chilling, doing something. They get an alarm like, hey, there's uh, Mega Man's in your in your chamber again. Oh, okay. And then just drop in for a fight. But at least they get the rest of their day to themselves. So I'm not sure if that's the case here. I just imagine it's like um, the scene in Voltron where they just like drop in the tubes and it like goes and puts them in the lions. That's how the yeah. robot masters make it to to the the fight moon. Oh yeah, you know that makes a lot of sense. Oh no, oh no, the rudest little steamling is just <laughs> not coming down. If I remember correctly, click and play had a thing like if you were caught like that, you it would just sometimes randomly add an angle on the bounce. Yep, yep. The bounce code is very, very weird. Uh, and sometimes, like uh, I would just do. Uh, oh wow! Okay, Glitchwitch managed to find a, a place, a way to be stuck in the first frame of the slashing animation, so she all enemies just kept dying immediately when touching her. That was kind of incredible. So, it looks like uh, we got about 40 seconds left here in the match. Alright, it's... Hmm. I so, don't think Glitchwitch can come back from this. I do not think so. <laughs> oh. It, but I, I totally think it's all down to not being able to get down the fire jump. Yep, yep, that was just like bad click and play programming on my part back then. I just figured, eh. Just, just oh my gosh, I made it back just in time because we're almost <laughs> over. Yes. Oh my gosh, what a video game this was, Zandra. <laughs> it's been wonderful. <laughs> oh, it, so, it's so definitely been something. Uh, wonderful might not be the right term for this, but well, you know what? We're not we're not the ones playing it right now, I guess. Yeah, I suppose. That, as a matter of fact, is time, everybody. It is time we are done. Oh my gosh, with our first game, because guess what? We've got two other games. Andy has taken the victory for the first match with Xandra's game. What a beautiful game. Glitch, which though has a chance of getting back into this. Congratulations, Andy, on that victory. So what did you think of how they did, Xandra? I'm like honestly amazed because I, this this game like was way harder than I remembered it. I figured like, yeah, you could probably like finish this at some point with some effort, but like, no, no, this is like, no, none of this is would be considered that playable today. There's like so many things wrong with it and enemies just keep like spawn camping you for no reason, just through pure like bad luck. And like, yeah, getting to two bosses in like under an hour, that's pretty good. I don't oh, expect yeah. many like many people could just do that, especially not after what I've seen today. I, this has I, been like a dose of, of hard nostalgia. Aw. <laughs> I really am glad that we were able to have this, though. Seriously, uh, great job to the players. But we've got more where this came from. So let's go ahead and head back uh, as we start doing setup for the second game of three. 
Oh my gosh. Okay, I just need to breathe a little bit. <laughs> oh, they are typing so much in. Oh no! I love it. Oh no. no, like Literally, there, there's some strong conversation. Hmm? Literally, the most frustrating experience I've ever had in Crystal Grande to date. Oh no! I'm so sorry. No, you're not. Uh, I'm not sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not. The, the, this is the finals. It's uh, it, it's supposed to be evil. Oh yeah, I agree. Uh, and evil it was. Well, <sighs> thank thank you so much for having me for for this momentous first match. <laughs> oh yeah, you're welcome. Seriously, anytime. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, I'll go ahead and keep setting things up because guess what? We do have the two games coming up and I just realized that I'm being really dumb. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm going to head out. Thank you so much. I I really really appreciate this. Thank you as well. Bye Best Zandra. Of luck, everybody. Bye-bye. So everybody Oh my gosh, I do want to give a huge shout out, by the way, because we've had people gifting subs. Thank you so much, uh, Tempestral, SA Fib, uh, I, I believe Heroic Technology was in there as well. Uh, we we had some from Jangle Storm or er, er, Jangle Storm rated. Kessin Chu gifted some subs. Like seriously, you all have been super fantastic. Uh, Trisden, oh I guess Tempestral. Uh, just resubscribed and Trisden gave out the 10 sub seriously thank you all so much poor Dan I'm losing my brain here well I, I mean to be fair we only have two more games left after that you can lose your brain all you want oh good oh thank goodness <laughs> I don't I don't need a brain anymore corn Dan because it's almost the end of the year I don't have to teach for the whole rest of the year Faizu thank you so much well, I'm close to getting the reveal for the next game. Uh, as it turns out, we actually chose some of the games today due to... Uh, why did we choose the games that we chose? Well, well, so for the finals, we have three categories of games. Right? We have a Windows and DOS game. Um, there's a console game and another game, and the, the, the console game got vetoed a lot. Oh yeah, uh, and this next game coming up is definitely the console game, uh, and the person who chose it, by the way, is actually you, Corn Dan. Thank it you. is me. Yeah. Ah, uh, no reason to be scared. Thank you, Mooware. Thank you, Coyote Seattle. Uh, yeah. What? I have to ask. What do we have coming up? Do you really have to ask? You know. I know. I bring. I bring a late Christmas present to everyone here. That's so dumb. Isn't it? It's more RoboCop, guys. Oh my gosh. It's RoboCop 3. Wait, this is the Genesis version that I'm showing, but it's actually it the, the Game, Game Gear. Gear version that we're going to be having. It <sighs> is the Game Gear. It, it's it's like, the, it's like the Genesis version. We've seen the Genesis version before. The Game Gear version is so much worse. Yeah. It is, Corn Dan. Trust me, I know. Oh my gosh. Well, it, it, yeah, and go here's the thing, there's still more RoboCop out there, but I couldn't use it for the console because it wasn't a console version. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Well, just give me a second. I need to figure out what the crap I'm doing with this uh, before I it, get going. And, and Mike Yama is right. The Game Gear version is always worse. Um, Somehow. You you don't even need context for that. It's just true. It, yeah, it really is. Like, honestly, this game is so bad. It's so very bad. I hope you're all ready. It, oh, and, and I didn't give him controls for this, which makes it even more fun. Well, that's not nice. Okay. Mostly because I went looking, didn't see a manual in like my 10 seconds of looking and said, eh, it's a Game Gear game. It's not that hard to figure out. Oh, it's a Game Gear game. Da, so, da, da, da. Better on it, actually, the Game Gear 
was a master system, but better with a lower resolution. It, it could actually do more colors and everything like that. Like, you can play Master System games on the Game Gear, you can't do the reverse. So, for whatever reason... Yeah, no, this is always worth. Let's, let's... Yeah, let me, let me go ahead and do that real quick. Uh... As soon as I can get this done, it'll be good. Okay. I'm sorry that I am so scatterbrained today because I am having to take care of a lot of stuff. Which, uh, welcome to my life today. I, as soon as, uh, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Sorry, I'm, I'm yelling at, uh, yelling at my computer because, you know, uh, Justin is still getting better uh, after breaking his hip. Uh, his mother-in-law is out here and she's going to be traveling in just a little bit uh, back home. And when I say just a little bit, I mean like right now. <laughs> I hope I didn't close OBS. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> I didn't lose my mind quite that much. Oops. That's okay. So, Robocop 3, this is a game that I actually owned as a kid, Corn Dan. I did too. Really? Yeah, on the Game Gear. Same. And uh, and I don't own it anymore. I did and not it, make it, it, it very lost. far. It, it, it got lost in one of the various moves, and... Um, I, I don't know what happened to it after that, and you know what? I'm all the better off for Yeah, I honestly never needed this game in my life. Never wanted this game in my life, but guess what? My parents decided that I should have this Robocop to play as a kid. And, you know, there's worse out there, but oh geez, this game definitely has some problems. Uh, I'm ex I'm always excited to see people cheering on some of the various players here. Thank you so much for being excited, everybody. This has been a great first match so far, and now we're on to game number two, RoboCop 3. Both of our players are going to be battling it out here. Oh, no. I remember this music. Oh yeah, it's, it's, just a, it's not good. <sighs> it could be worse, but oh, it could be better. It, it can't be a whole lot worse. This may be... Right, I think the only Robocop game that we've seen so far in Cuso Grande that's worse than this is that Korean Sega Master System bootleg. Oh, and I am not a fan of that one. Not a I, fan I, I am, at because all. It is so bad. It is so so bad. So I, I mean, like Andy might have a, a decent time with this just because it's not the Korean bootleg. Wow! Yeah, uh, you were whining to give. You, you were really wanting to give the Korean bootleg out. Uh, but guess what? Andy had already played it. Uh, yeah, we went looking and Andy played this in Cuso Grande 4. Yeah, by the way, I'm making the meme die. The Robocop meme die is dying. It's dead. It's dead after this well, tournament. No, like, we might have a couple Robocops, but no more when Corn Dan's around. It's going to be Robocop. I'm killing the meme. Except if you let the meat live on, right? No. People are going to be afraid of what I'm going to hand out, and then it won't be Robocop, and so I can save, like, the really bad Robocops until they stop thinking about it, and then it's going to be awesome. Hey, guess what? The players are ready. So, everybody, you've had plenty of Robocop uh, games. Go ahead and spam whatever you spam for all the others. <laughs> Like robots and cops. And cops. And, and Robocops. And, and jetpacks. Jetpacks. Uh, are there any ninjas? 
Um, yeah, I think there are in RoboCop 3. Sure, spam some ninjas. As soon as I see movement for one of the players, I will start our timer. Uh, I mean, the, the, the Waluigi, um, you know, Proton John. Uh, the Waluigi Cop. Part. Ah, Faizu says there are ninjas in RoboCop 3. That's good to know. Glitchwitch is trying to figure out how to deal some damage to the, these enemies in the windows. Uh, honestly, with a lot of RoboCop games, what you learn early on is uh, who you need to kill and who you should just skip over. Because there are a lot of enemies that it's just not worth fighting them. Well, except in this game, it almost kind of is. And not because... Right, like, whatever. The, the problem is this. This game, um, like, everybody shoots you for a lot of damage. And so it's almost worth killing everybody just to keep them from shooting you. Because um, we're going to see a game over before we get out of this first area. I guarantee it. Oh, yeah. Like, the, these robots with the homing bombs are pretty much a They're pain. The, the guys on the bicycles deal a lot of damage. Which, by the way, we've had the Super Nintendo version of this quite a bit, haven't we've we? Had, we've had the Genesis version of this. Oh, Genesis. Okay. I mean, they're, they're very similar. Yeah. Honestly, right now, just from what I've seen so far, this uh, looks a whole lot more playable. Honestly, I have a hard time remembering anything from my childhood uh, related to RoboCop. I, I mean... I think it's, I mean, it's fluid, right? They ported this over from the Genesis, so it's got good colors. And I think this was on the, the, the latter half of the Genesis, so this was pretty well fleshed out. But it's not good in any stretch of the imagination for reasons. Oh, yeah. Uh, just so people know, by the way, Andy does currently have a one-game lead over Glitch, which Glitch which needs to win this one if she wants a chance uh, to become the grand champion. Andy is last year's grand champion. He got that $500 as well as the trophy, uh, and he's definitely on track for that again. Uh, will he get it? Who knows? Well, only time will tell. Not a whole lot of time. A little bit of time. So is there any sweet RoboCop lore that made it official that RoboCop just couldn't use his other hand for anything ever? Well, his other hand, if I remember correctly, you know, turns into a data spike. Ooh. Um, so, right, like, you could you could stab people with it, but RoboCop doesn't do that because he's still a cop and he's honorable. And, and he, you know, he still wants to protect and serve. Oh, geez, these rocket launchers. Yeah, Andy is just trying to get through without killing too many enemies, and that is not working. Nope. You have 10 seconds to comply. Andy complied. I think he wants to see where the game over, where the continue takes him. Does it take him to the beginning of the game? It oh, yeah. does. <laughs> oh, Glitch Witch! Don't hop in the pit. That's not what pits are for. They're the worst. Like, the, those pits are the worst. You have to get the timing just right. Yeah, both of the players made a good decision, by the way, to see if re or continuing takes them to a checkpoint. And both have opted to reset right after. That's good gameplay. Uh, seeing where it takes you, learning the rules of the game, learning how kind or mean it's going to be. And this game is not kind. No. And, and you would expect that for a Game Gear game, right, where yeah. you basically had to beat it within the scope of the 30 minutes you had in batteries. And it was really a couple hours, but not... I mean, Look, that, what, would, just get an adapter. I have an adapter because that's the only way my Game Gear works now, except I think there's still something wrong with my Game Gear. Because it uh, doesn't play anymore. I think I may have used batteries once and that's it like otherwise I just remember back in the day sitting on the hardwood floor in our family room uh, with it plugged into the wall sitting there on the wood playing Robocop uh, Sonic 2 what else I think everybody had Sonic 2 and Sonic Chaos I didn't have Sonic Chaos right like those just seem like the, 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 the games that like everybody had 
Um, see, I made the mistake. My sister and I got portable systems at the same time, and she got herself a Game Boy, and I got myself a, a Game Gear, and I thought it was so much better because it was full color, all of that. Man, I was wrong. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Sencha has played this too. Andy has found out that moving platforms are not your friend in this game. Uh, I don't think I ever got past level two in this. Oh yeah, my my parents got us this. They were thinking about getting us uh, the Game Gear or the Game Boy as kids, and they opted for the Game Gear because guess what? It has color. That's why I opted for it as a kid. I mean, I, I think I would have taken a Game Boy. I think I was, I think I was a little bit disappointed, but didn't want to say anything. You know, it's not cheap to go get a handheld console. This music. So they've both made it to the the. Oh no! Glitch, witch. That... Yeah, this boss is rough. Uh, yeah, I I think Andy's got the right idea, but I don't think it really matters. Well, he died. He's got ten seconds to comply. Well, I guess he's not going to comply. Wow, Andy. What a dude, just refusing. Well, both players are actually doing a pretty good fight against this boss, but it is really rough. Yep. I don't even remember how I, um, how I beat it as a kid. Probably a lot of luck. Oh, yeah. Uh, a lot of luck, and I, I think that they come out in a specific order, left or right, you know? So if, if you remember which direction they're going to be coming from, it's a little bit more doable. But that's memorization for you, and honestly, with a game called Robocop, you're not thinking too much about memorizing uh, what enemies are going to be doing, but it's a good idea. So, as you all know, just like every other Robocop game in existence, this was developed by Ocean. However, it was published by a company called Flying Edge. Uh, they also helped with games that I'm seeing... I have no idea Why how. Had, uh, they Why were a, a lot of conversions. Oh, they were a division of Acclaim. So yeah, they did conversions with Bartman meets Radioactive Man. Uh, I I see some Adams Family games in there. Bart's Nightmare. Good old Krusty's Super Fun House. You know, all the quality video games. Yeah, anytime I see Flying Edge um, on a game, I know that a, the, the, the original was probably bad to begin with, and B, the report is it's going to be worse. Now, I do have to say that uh, one of the guys who wrote this, I, I think wrote the code for this, was the senior platform programmer for Guitar Hero Live. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I mean, we have definitely demonstrated that people in who have made games in Puso Grande have gone on to do actually good things. I don't know if that was actually a good thing. Like, that was probably after Guitar Hero was mostly, mostly dead. Well, I, I, I mean, I'm going to... Okay, how about <laughs> less bad things? Okay, right. yeah, I yeah, never yeah. played Guitar Hero Live, so I can't speak for how good or bad it actually is. Wow, you're judging it without even having played it. How could you I do that? Giving, like, gamers never judge things. Gamers I never was, judge things. I the doubt that it was good. You were the one judging him that it was it was after Guitar Hero went to crap. Oh, well, I've never played it as well. <laughs> I, I was trying to, to give him the benefit that it was, in fact, good. Okay, Andy, back to the boss. He's going to die. There we go. 
That didn't take long. Yeah, it's... Yeah, and also gamers never judge video games they've never played before. Ever. I, I mean, I'll try pretty much any video game, which is why I handed out a lot of them on Cusa Grande. I'll usually try any game. It's and worth That's how you find Wolf Quest. Oh, but, you know, Wolf Quest is very broken. Well, yes. And so is this. Uh, Andy is... Oh, I, w I was just about to say he's doing a good job, but he's dead now. So... Yeah, Glitch Witch is going to die right here. Oh, very, very fast, quickly. yeah. There we go. The person who wrote R-Type 2 uh, was also one of the developers for this. Well, see, R Type 2 is a pretty good game. Thank you, Tim Round. And Matt Furness did the music and sound effects for this game, so, like, they had a pretty good cast. Not gonna lie. I, I mean, I would. I am willing to say that this game makes use of what the Game Gear has to offer as best as it can. Hey, Andy is on to level two, which I want you all to know uh, is a problem. Because if I remember anything from the Genesis version, it's that there will be 50 billion deaths. Glitch Witch has figured out that enemies can either crouch or stay standing. And if they stay standing and you crouch, they will never hit you. So... Yeah, that, that's definitely a good piece of information to have. Well, so apparently we've learned there's only one continue. That's actually helpful information to have. Glitch Witch definitely could benefit from that knowledge. Well, Glitch Witch shared that knowledge in Discord. Oh, well, oops. <laughs> I would have held that close. Keep the no Well, you know what? Glitch Witch is a very nice person. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm glad that she did. But you shouldn't have. People are asking what they came back to. This is Robocop for the Game Gear. Andy is going to die a few times here. I, I mean, our, our goal basically with these finals is to give them some of the worst trash we could find. Oh, yeah. And remember... Oh, I'm sad that the elevator section there isn't nearly as bad as it is on the Genesis because the ge it's so bad. The Genesis wants the worst. But, like, everything else in this version is definitely worse. I love the little guy here. He just comes and, like, you know, puts a screw into the robots like, you're good to go. Robots fighting robots? What is, th what has this world it's come It's Mega to? Man. Oh. Kind of sounds like Mega Man. Kind of. Do, do, do. Like, here's the deal. Andy is currently in the lead. He's won one of the games so far. Uh, Glitch Witch needs to win this in order to stay in. You know, taking second place in a tournament like this is not bad at all. But, you know, both of them want that title. What's the title again? Um... The Grand Champion of... Crap. Crap champion, the crap champ. No. I, I mean, you get you get maybe a sweet trophy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I don't know if anybody has it. Uh, has a link to the picture. The one that Andy got for the last Cusa Grande is pretty dang awesome. Corn Dan made it. Uh, I still think that you spent more money on it than I did the other two trophies that I got. I possibly spent six dollars. 
I spent like four dollars. I was... spent six dollars and mine does something. Well, I spent like four dollars and it was a chili trophy. Did Dragon Dark ever get his trophy ass chat? Yeah. Yes, he did. I think right so. Right before right before the Tuso Grande finals, an NPC got his right before the Tuso 3 finals. I feel and like Andy that's got another his right before um the, the Tuso 4 finals. We know when you're going to get your your trophy. That's another meme and we gonna... can stop. <laughs> RoboCop and the trophy coming in like a year late. <laughs> Or maybe not, whatever. That can stay. I, I don't know. I, I think it's fun at this point in time. I'd rather have that than Robocop. Hey, Glitch Witch is moving on to level two. Yeah, I told you, she uh, still uh, has a pretty dang good shot of making some progress here. So, especially given that there's only one continue? Oh, yeah. Um, Like, that makes a big difference. If they were on limited continues, I, I would say Andy has a clear advantage. Right, but I don't feel that that's the case here. Right, because it, once you once you die on that, and you're going to die in level 2 because it's bad. Oh, yeah. Like, level right. 2 is so... We're going to see level two a lot. With the boss rush, or not the boss rush, just all of the enemies coming and fighting you and your friendly robot pal. But because of that, right? Like, the added time that Glitch Witch spent on. Figuring out the pattern and everything on level one is really going to help out. And Glitch Witch has the right idea here on this boss. It's just duck down and shoot everybody that moves. Pew, pew, pew. Yes. Hey, Glitch Witch is moving on. I'm wondering. Th this actually looks like uh, close to where Andy has made it. It's after these boulders. These boulders deal a lot of damage, by the way. You do not want to get yep. hit. Oh, no. She's trying to Super Mario bro Brothers them jump by jumping over them. Well, I, I mean, that's the right thing to do. Oh, Glitch Witch moves I into think... first place. No, no, Andy made it. Oh. To at least the spot because of the, the flamethrower. The flamethrower is pretty awful. You're better off with the laser. Okay. I don't know. Whatever. It's it's really close for the two players. Andy though is able to get back to this uh to this area with two extra lives, and I think a full continue as well. Yeah. I think we're going to start seeing a lot of that. So, yeah, Andy's right about where um, he died before. Yeah. <laughs> Andy is trying to use that flamethrower. It's not working out too well. Yeah, so Andy has the right idea. The um, ammo pickups always give you 100 ammo. So your, your best setup on that is to get, pull out your laser, right, when you pick up the, the ammo. Because you only get 50 laser when you start, but you're going to get 100 every time you hit those. And, and you would get 100 no matter what, whether you have the single shot, the three-way, the laser, the flamethrower. Oh, yeah. Just so you know, everybody, this is for the title. The title, the Cusa Grande champion or something.
Oh, no, we'll think of a title. Uh, yeah, and well. the winner will be getting $500 as well as a Cuso Grande trophy. Uh, yeah, the, the person who comes in second will still be getting some prizes, but really we're wanting to see who uh, gets the bragging rights for being uh, so, the winner. So people are asking in chat, the Cuso Grande 3 trophy, is it a real working NES game? And the answer is yes. It's it's, it's So it's not a spray-painted cart. It's actually a gold injection-molded cart that I put Captain Skyhawk in. No, you put... You didn't put Captain Skyhawk in. I did put Captain Skyhawk in. No, you put the other game in. No, I thought I'd put Top Gun in. I put in Captain Skyhawk because Andy tested it. Oh. <laughs> so you put and in the I wrong thought... game? How could you no, do no, that? No, 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 because, because I went to our local... Well, local-ish um, game store, right? There, there's one not too far from us. It's really good for... Uh, Andy uh, is onto for, the like, flying stage. Sorry, I haven't seen this on Game Gear. It, it, it's not any better than it was on Genesis. Oh, the camera is kind of nauseating, Bad. not gonna lie. But, yeah, at, at our local video game store, they had a bargain bin when I was there. It was a dollar games, and they had a whole bunch of, like, NES games and, like, Wii games and stuff like that. Like, a bunch of games that basically just didn't matter. And um, so I picked up four of them, two Sesame Street games, Top Gun, and Captain Skyhawk, because the label on Captain Skyhawk seemed real bad. Yeah, it, it is. I think I actually own it. Well, Andy does now, too. Oh, well, good. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, if the last game of Cusa Grande, this tournament, of the, the fourth one is Robocop. I'm going to be so mad. <laughs> no, you won't. I'll be so angry. No, I want a third game. Come no, on, Glitchwitch. I mean, Everybody cheer for Glitchwitch. You can do it. I, Give us I'm a third game. I'm hoping for a third game regardless. Yeah, like, e even if it doesn't matter... Having a third game would be a blast. Uh, the next game, I can guarantee you, everybody in chat, it is not RoboCop. Because we didn't have a redraw, <laughs> it would have been RoboCop well, otherwise. We, we basically said that that for that particular game that's coming up, um, that uh, you would have actually had to play the game and not just seen it. And there was essentially zero chance of that happening oh yeah ah so right now andy you know what this flying stage actually seems a lot more difficult than on the genesis version he's taking a lot of damage yeah the so, end you know, right let, let's be let's be honest here if this is the, the last like important game of Puso grande 4 it's appropriate Right. It's um, so dumb, but yeah. Is, if, if the next game is the last game in Puso Grande 4, it's appropriate. Oh, both of them are going to be appropriate, yeah. Uh, by the way, yeah, we have a little under 40 minutes left. Uh, Andy is making a pretty good push through the auto-scroller section. I honestly think that if Glitch Witch gets here, it's not going to be a huge... Uh, difficult section like you do take a lot of damage but if you're just paying attention you can usually dodge a lot of the bullets i, I um, mean if you can play shmups to any level of degree that's not just let's run into the enemies you'll, you'll make it through i think that that's safe oh yeah one thing that you will notice by the way everybody watching is that uh you do have ammo for every weapon and you do not want to waste it if you run out of ammo you are in big trouble Especially, like, the laser is extremely helpful. Laser and three-way shots, those are the two weapons that matter in this game. Uh, yeah. So, there are places where the flamethrower is really useful. 
Okay, like, it, it's really useful on the boss of level two because you can basically jump to <laughs> oh, Andy. spam like everything, right? And um, oh, that's awesome. Andy died as the boss died. Continued has to do the whole stage over. Oh yeah. Uh, so but with the with the boss in stage two, you can jump over everything as they're going through, and the flamethrower sticks around a little bit, so you can you can spam the flamethrower as they're going by. And it'll hit them, and you don't have to worry about like trying to jump up in the line of fire. So it does give you some measure of safety. Oh yeah. But in general, the laser does the best, right? And and the laser is always the one that, in the times I've played this, and everything that I would always grab the extra ammo for the laser because you're going to use it more often, right? It takes like you will, eight yeah. or something on the robots to kill them with the standard gun, and two with the laser. Okay, Glitch Witch is on to the first boss here. Uh, I believe she's going to get through it. She died. Oh, no. no. She what died. What I would do, though, if I were Glitch Witch on this, right, because you have so much laser on this, right, just get in the middle and just start spamming. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Yeah, yeah and, and, and just shoot the laser because you don't get it back. Yeah, reacting is honestly not going to be helpful here. You have to just kill everything while it's off screen. Otherwise, you're going to take damage. You're going to get hurt. You're going to die. Don't react. So how, just shoot. Yep. Yeah. How far behind is Glitch? Uh, one Ooh. level. Yeah, honestly, Glitch Witch is not too far behind. Uh and if she can manage to get through at level two, like the auto scroller, again, it's slow, but I honestly think it's going to be relatively uh, easy, especially compared to these earlier stages. But maybe not. Andy's really been struggling with this. Maybe he just doesn't like auto scrollers. Andy? What? So I, sorry, I just looked a little bit at uh, one of these developers' histories, and he made a game called Percy the Potty Pigeon for the Spectrum. Uh, Percy's task was to build a nest from twigs. Why is he a potty pigeon? Well, look, look. Okay, you know what? It's Spectrum. I'm not even gonna try to to justify anything on that. Oh, apparently he poops. Well, who doesn't poop? Everybody poops. If you're not pooping, go see a doctor. Seriously. But if you poop on something, does it? Do you make it explode? Because he does. I, I do. Don't know about you, but how many toilets do you go through a week? Like a lot of them. Also, why don't I have the Cusa Grande icon up at the top? Oh my gosh, Corn Dan. I don't know. I don't know. I'm having a hard time. Help. You know what? I don't know if you've had it up there since you moved from x to OBS. I mean, I assume you have. I have. I swear. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, let me go ahead and fix all the dumb stuff, because I'm dumb. So, Zelixon, Glitch Witch is currently on stage one, but Glitch Witch has made it to the boss of stage two. Which is one level behind. Dude. I kind of like the music in this game, but again, this was Map Furnace, you know? It's pretty good music. Yeah, th this is not unreasonable. Right? Especially with the, the Game Gear's hardware. Well, I mean, Game Gear was essentially a handheld master system, but even for the master we're, we're system, this colors. is pretty good. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think that if I ever got a chance, Corndan, I would try to blow up a toilet. It would be fun. 
I, I mean... Not I my toilet, can... that costs money. I, I guess I could tell you from experience, it's, um... It's fun once, but then it's expensive? Well, yeah, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna use my own toilet, Corn Dan. I'm gonna go, like, go and find somebody who has an extra toilet, who doesn't want it. Like, hey, I gotta get rid of my toilet. I just hate this toilet. I'll be like, hey, yeah, I'll go ahead and take it off your hands and then blow it up. I mean, I, I knew somebody in high school that blew one off their wall because they got a hold of a chunk of um, sodium or something and then flushed it down the toilet and got stuck. Oh, that's not good. Well, it, it blew the toilet off the wall. Yeah, I know. I mean, I guess maybe mine was an understatement there. Yeah, it's like I think I think that it it exploded in the heat trap of the toilet. Huh. I'm just trying to think because. Yeah, I can't... I'm, I'm sorry, my life has not been filled with very memorable toilets, you know? A lot of very forgettable ones. So why, does, why doesn't Glitch use the continues? And the answer is that there's only one continue. And it just takes you back to the beginning of the stage. Yep, and if you're on so the here, first level, it's not worth it. There's no point in you... Ah, <sighs> well, we're 32 minutes into the match. Uh, Andy still definitely has the lead. He's been struggling on the auto-scroller, though, uh, which I don't know. It looks easy, but it probably looks easier than it is to play, mostly because uh, the controls on this game feel a little bit stiff, especially uh, uh, in the side-scrolling platforming sections. Like, Robocop moves like... Not like the new robots by that one really cool company that makes running robots and they can do backflips and stuff. No, he he walks like a 90s robot, okay? Like a 90s robot that if you sneezed just right, he would fall over and never be able to get back up again. That's how he walks, okay? Also walks like he really needs to use the bathroom. Like, do not move anything above the legs. I mean, I imagine he's been a robot for so long, he has to have a desire to go to the bathroom, right? Well, I mean, maybe not. I just imagine my mind would eventually tell me, look, you haven't... Like, it probably wouldn't realize to some degree that I don't have a butt yet. Have a phantom butt syndrome. Be like, hoy, you haven't, you haven't pooped in so long. You gotta go. Like, but... It's like, I have no mouth, but I must scream, except I have no butt, but I must poop. I guess. That's what it's got to be like. I'm sorry that I'm talking about, let's move on to another topic. You're not sorry. No, <laughs> I'm not. Well, Glitch Witch is trying to do the platforming sections. Again, that's not trivial because the platforms going left and right move at the same speed that you move. And because of that, if for some reason uh, you get it just a little bit wrong and jump a little bit too late, it'll move before you have any chance of laughing. Wow. Essentia's saying she's not related to me. That's a lie. Well, how, how could she lie like that? Oh, by the way, I like Glitch Witch's strat, which was basically sit to the left and wait for enemies to resp or to spawn on the right side. It kind of worked. Oh my gosh. 
Now I understand why I never got past level two in this game as a kid. Because it's so bad. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. Literally impossible. I mean, no, we've seen Andy do it, so it's not literally impossible. Well, that is true. But it's it's still basically impossible. Metaphorically impossible. There we go. How about that? Drop the metaphors. Speaking, it's impossible. I, I love taking a look at some of the reviews for this game because uh, most of them just accuse the game of being mediocre. Did they even play this? Well, so most of the ones I read on this have been have been that this is one of the worst reviewed Game Gear games specifically because of how difficult it is. It's so difficult. And it is it is really hard. So I, I mean I guess in some ways they're not wrong in, in that it's mediocre and if it weren't so hard it would just be mediocre. Here's the deal. So, I, I feel like it's pretty entertaining when uh, they're when not, not great at the game, but if they were good at this game, this would be such a boring watch. Pretty much. There's my assessment for you. Fun when they haven't played it. Not fun if they're good at it. I am excited because I just got in the mail while we're talking here. An add-on for my Saturn so I can play Drink Wars. You've been playing what? So I can play imports on my Sega Saturn. Ooh, oh, that's awesome. Because although we have Saturn support in the Cusa Grande Rush, Saturn emulation is not real great. Oh, yeah. Uh, honestly, Corn Dan has actively been working on getting multiple platforms working on RetroArch. Thank you so much. Or RetroArch, however you want to say it. I, I think we're, we're basically down to as, as far as we're going to go, right? They haven't been adding new cores, but the cores they've had have been adding a lot of new functionality um, lately, which has been really good. Oh, yeah. So, uh, unfortunately for the players, it means we've done more dates on things to get safe states and um, more accurate emulation. And all of that's going to change some in Cuso Grande 5. There's been some new features coming in RetroArch that have been really useful it, that literally just came out in the new version. So we're going to put up one new package that we probably won't have to change for all of Cuso 5. Sweet. Now, if they can get the audio for Atari 800 XL games right, then I will consider it complete. Well, I mean, we're trying. Well, you no. Know, so, so a couple of those emulators, um, Atari, for instance, right, to do the Atari 800 is um, notoriously difficult, right, to get going. Well, I mean, here's the deal. It's because RetroArch uses an older version, like a version that was made, what, eight years ago? Something like that. Uh, uh, so if they use it's an... It's more modern than that, but it's, it's a pain. If they use an updated version, then we can get the audio right, which will make me happy. Otherwise, I'm going to reserve the right to give out my own emulator. Oh, sure, and, and, and we, we know that that's always going to be the case. Um, that there, there's still going to be circumstances that even though there might be official support in um, RetroArch for certain systems like DOS, uh, we're still going to have situations that are going to be um, better to use what we've been using. Yeah. Hey, Glitchwitch died again. Shoot. Like... She has to be getting a little bit frustrated because uh, this boss battle at the very end of stage one is just wrecking her over and over and over again. And I, I don't know if there's a, like, obviously Andy has figured out a strat that works. Glitchwitch just needs to start trying something new. Yep, yeah, just, just literally sit in the middle and rock back and forth and shoot. And um, what, what she's kind of doing now, but she's doing it in a reactionary way. It was kind of... 
I think that did it. She's moving on to the next stage. Good, 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 good. Okay, on to stage two. Uh, she's made a good amount of progress here, but I don't believe she's seen the boss yet. Honestly, I'm a little bit concerned. Oh, apparently Glitch has been to the boss. Yes. How could they make more progress in this game than my entire childhood? Well, because you're bad at games. Wow. Corned in. Them's fighting words. I'm going to have to race you in another game sometime soon. Well, let, let's hope that the, that particular game comes out when we think it will, in which case I will gladly race you in that. When does it come out? Once it's scheduled. It doesn't, ha it doesn't have an answer yet. 2020? Uh, 2020? Okay. Because I want to race you in that game. Uh, the game that we're talking about, I'm not spoiling it for you. Everybody, stay tuned. Follow me on twitch.tv slash Procentia and follow Corn Dan on uh on my channel too <laughs> i'm stealing all yeah, your viewers much. corn dan <laughs> all, all all three of them all three right, of tina, them tina fizu and whoever else shows up <laughs> oh i occasionally show up i i need to show up more though uh but seriously glitch witch andy everybody who has been playing has their channels please do follow the people who've been playing follow our uh, game masters everybody has been putting a whole lot of work into this share the love and you know find new people to watch who play crappy video games i've actually been playing good games lately on stream what of all things yeah i should probably do that you know but I, i've been playing I've, I've been playing monster boy oh yeah monster i saw you wonderful. playing that it the music's so good the, the music's good, the gameplay is good, I am not good at it, but all of you guys should go play it because it's wonderful. Also, Andy made it to the fourth level now. Oh yeah. The twist with this level is you have to walk to the left. Okay, Glitch Witch, just gotta, gotta fight the boss. Gotta, unfortunately, Glitch Witch picked up the health while at full health. That's not, is the health? I believe it is. He is health. It's energy. Just, just gotta keep shooting, okay? Don't risk getting hit. Just Pretty keep much. shooting. <laughs> Here's the deal. Even if Glitch Witch does get a game over in the near future, there's still enough time to catch up to where Andy is. Uh, I really hope that we can see Glitch Witch take the victory here. It's because I want to see a third game. That I, I want to see it all come down to the third game today. I, I mean, I hope I hope they'll agree to play the third game anyway, even if it doesn't matter. I have a feeling they would want to. Uh, Glitch Witch has already... Um, has already stated that even if we don't play it here, she wants to play it. Sweet. Glitch Witch, grab the ammo and don't die. Okay, good. No! Oh, I forgot. This game basically has no iframes. If you are in yeah. the hitbox of an enemy, your health just whoop, goes right on down. Yeah. Yeah. So Andy, Andy's on uh, uh, basically the um, the corridor maze. <laughs> uh, corridor maze, my favorite. Okay, glitch witch onto the boss, and wow, <laughs> just got John Cena right there. Whatever they call that. Yeah. John C yeah, he, he did that move called the John Cena move, you know. You know, that, that move that Procentia has no idea what it is. Yeah, it's a pretty good wrestling move, the the John Cena move. You know, that move. Yeah. So Glitch Witch will make it to the boss this time, right, and do well. Come on, Glitch. Oh, Andy got the key. 
Guess what? You have to fall down in the pit. Wait, no. no. Ah, <laughs> I tricked you, Andy. Game over. Yeah. <laughs> he is not listening to the stream, so I didn't trick anybody. Well, I mean, maybe you did. I think I tricked myself. Probably. Like, here's the deal. Glitch Witch probably can't make much progress in the next level, but it would be good to actually be able to see it. Well, oh, the boss Glitch is Witch dead. Have a continue. I don't right? think Glitch Witch has a continue, but maybe. A sliver of health left, and we're on to the auto-scroller. Oh, baby cakes. Right, but I mean... Like, I know Glitch Witch has played... Like, sh vertical shmups and stuff before. I think she'll be fine. This may go just fine, yeah. Ooh, taking a little collision damage there. Uh, I'm a little bit concerned she's not really destroying anything right now. So, really, honestly, all you want to do is pick up the um, the health packs, or the, um, the power-ups when they're there, and then essentially hang out on the right-hand side of the screen. Like, you don't actually have to kill anything on the stage. Minus the last boss. Yeah, that's probably a good uh, good way to approach this level. Oh, I still hate the camera in this. It's so bad. How far behind is Glitch, which Mike asks. Uh, honestly, one level. One level. And at this point, she could pass Andy, depending if she gets the key and doesn't immediately jump into the pit and die. Yeah, I mean, where Glitch Witch is now is just now, like, avoid the big fireballs. And, and she's going to be in. And if oh, she yeah. has the continue left, I think she'll be just fine. She's doing really good with this uh, uh -huh. shoot em up as well. She's, at, she's doing a lot better than Andy did his first. Yeah. But that's because she has experience with these sorts of games. I mean, I, I'm relatively good at shoot em ups like this. I, I thought I was decent at it. I played in the, the Tally's Cup uh, this year, which is a, a tournament for, it's a team-based tournament for um, shmups, right? Like arcade shmups. Yeah. And I am so bad. Like oh, compared no. to some of the, the, the people who do this, like they, so they paired up the teams based on like um, level of ability. So like all teams would have everybody from like people who could like one credit, like everything down to basically people who've never played any of these games before. Yeah. And so I, I literally had to go into it just being like, I just want to be not right. Yeah. And and people were getting like orders of magnitudes, higher points than I could ever get. Really? Uh, so, so I thought I'm like, okay, yeah, I can do this. I, I love playing these sorts of things. I'm not so bad at it. No, it turns out I am. Oh no. Oh, glitch, witch. No. Okay. Continue continue yes no, no! oh no! you know what she's still got one more chance just got to boogie through level right. one and two but she knows what to do now yes across the board she knows what to do i think there's one last shot she has to go now oh my gosh just so everybody knows who is in the lead right now andy is in the lead having made it to stage four got into the key and jumped into the pit which was not what you're supposed to do andy don't die uh glitch Witch, on the other hand has made it to stage three the auto scroller uh there's a lot to go until getting through the auto scroller uh i think I think there may be enough time for Glitch Witch to pass Andy, but again... It's going to be real tight. Yeah. It's not over till it's over. Yeah. I, I think the biggest thing that Glitch Witch needs to do is get through these bosses without really taking too many hits. Uh... You know, try not to die. If you do die to one of the bosses, get back to the boss without having any damage. You know, you just got a boogie. Andy, able to take that boss down incredibly fast. I don't even know what his name is. Like, he looks like a um, gronk. 
Glitch, would you call him Satan? Satan? Well, he looks like Satan as well. But why fight Satan? Well, because because RoboCop is the Jesus allegory. Are you sure? I, I am actually 100% certain on that one. Oh, okay. Okay, good to know. Uh, man, man comes back from the dead to save humanity? Yeah, but he's a robot and a cop. And and the um, the guy who did it, Paul Verhoeven, right, has even said as much. Right, Robocrop is the American Jesus. Okay. It's about a guy that gets crucified after fifty minutes, then he's resurrected in the next fifty, and then he's the super cop of the world. And he's a Jesus figure as he walks over water on the end. He walks over water in the movie. Pretty much. Okay, in that case, yeah, I'm going to agree with you. By the way, Glitch Witch 1 lifed the first stage. Didn't even die. That is fantastic. Definitely once, what she once needs. You, once you know exactly what you got to do. Right, and Glitch Witch is smart going back to make sure she can get the, um, the laser. Oh, yeah. You want the laser. You do need not... the laser for... Like, if you skip the laser, you're, you're dummy. But the lasers are just awesome anyway, you know? Okay, uh, we have about eight minutes left. Uh, the auto-scroller is so long. I think that's the only thing that's making that that's going to make it more likely that Andy takes the victory for this one as well just because it's going to take ages to get through uh glitch which if there's any chance at all glitch which has to do a first try yep and basically has to be perfect on everything else that's what my mother always told me <laughs> i'm sure Cassandra, you basically gotta be perfect. That that's well, not at all how she sounds, but I mean, we could ask Essentia if that's how she sounds. Uh, Essentia would say no. Probably. Yeah. Always being contrary. Okay, Andy just flying around. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Glitch Witch. Definitely knows switching to the laser before picking up ammo is a good choice. Uh, yeah, both of them have figured out the uh, basic strats for getting through some of these harder areas, which is great. Oh my gosh, I'm so stressed. I mean, we're almost, almost there. Seven minutes left. I know. I want to. I want Glitchwitch to move into the lead so we can have a tiebreaker. Come on, come on, Glitch. I, Glitch I hope Witch. they want to play it anyway. Oh yeah. But I want it to matter. Me too. You know what? It matters in our hearts. Well, I mean, regardless, I hope we see it. Did Glitchwitch finish the boss? Yes! yes! No deaths on that as well. Okay, by the way, everybody, there are signups for the next Kuso Grande, Kuso 5. So if you would like to sign up, we are likely starting towards the end of February, early March of 2020. Please do sign up. Uh, yeah, by January 15th, if you would like to play. Are we going to cap entries? No? I mean, we'll have to see how many people sign up. Uh, I mean, if we have like 500 people, then I'm probably going to have a heart attack. But we can usually restructure in order to uh, uh, get things working. I mean, I will have I will have a lot to do 
uh, in the meantime here to make sure that uh, that we can make this happen. Yeah. You know what? It's why it's nice having a statistician on staff. Yay, stats man. I mean, I, I, I like to hope that that's how we got some of this done through here, like figuring out the best way to assign points and all of that to make sure we get to um, the double eliminationals and all of that yep. in a reasonable amount of time. Andy, uh, using a continue, getting back to level four. Now, Glitch Witch has to get to level four. That means that she needs to beat this auto-scroller first try, essentially. Uh, yeah, we, we should also mention Cadis has been, you know... Uh, general purpose cat wrangler right yeah. for this which is why we actually got this done in a single calendar year yeah it it depends partly on if i continue teaching uh how much help i'll need uh, i'm definitely teaching next semester but after that it really depends because there are some other projects that will be happening as well uh does that confirm now what's that is that confirmed now? Uh, ha I haven't signed anything, so no talking about it. I didn't say I was talking about it. No talking about Corn Dad. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, and if if that happens. Then I could be doing video games full time. Oh, ooh, glitch which taking a little damage there. Andy, by the way, is getting close to where he was before. Oh no, Andy, very close to death. Let's see if he's able to get the key again, though. Come on, to the right. There's a key. He's taking it very careful. I like I it. Would. Okay, he got he got a key. He got a rocket launcher. That's more important than keys. Like you don't need keys if you have a rocket launcher. Oh my gosh, glitch witch is getting a good push through this. Like this is the really annoying part of the stage though when the uh, long boys show up and start shooting the fireballs at you. They deal a lot of damage, and if they run into you, it definitely hurts. Yeah, this stage is so long. Oh my gosh. Andy dying right there. Right where you ask on the stage. You know, don't die on the stage. Then you'll be fine. Hey, Glitch Witch has found the boss. But she does no, oh, no, no. That's it. That's it. That's it. There is no. Oh wait, no, no, no. You spawn on the boss if you oh. have lives. Oh baby. Okay, never mind. Not it. Not it. There's still hope. The dream's not dead. The boss is down. Glitch witch, you gotta hustle. I don't. I don't know if there's enough time, but come on, glitch witch, get the hustle. Oh, she grabs the key at the very beginning. Still don't, I don't oh. know that it'll matter, but this is going to be real close. Yeah, I think so. Andy has made it to what looks like... Ninjas. It's a ninja. Of course there's ninja. Are the rockets any good at all against ninjas? I haven't battled a ninja in my life. Just, just so you know. Hey, Andy got through the stage. Yeah, I think that's confirmed that Andy yeah. takes the win here. That's okay. Let's let's see what there is to offer for the next 30 seconds. Well, everybody, you do have your new Kusa Grande champion based off of the performance that we had just now. Wow. Amazing.
as well I say new as in he's not new he's holding on to his title everybody that's Andy for you nobody really too surprised because Andy is just that kind of player Andy takes the victory for Cusa Grande congratulations Oh my gosh. And with a Robocop game, none, you know. Because that's how, of course, that was how this was going to end. Oh, of course. Of course it's going to be Robocop. Andy, second time winner of Cusa Grande. Uh, going to hold on to that title, win the $500, win the trophy. Congratulations to him. Wow, Robocop absolutely fantastic you know let, let's go ahead and hop over here relax a little bit uh calm down a bit seriously congratulations andy i'm gonna invite them to come chat if they would like because technically it is done uh Oh my gosh. So I'm inviting them to come chat with us a little bit, talk about the experience. Uh, okay, I've got Andy. Congratulations, oh. Andy. You win for a second time in a row. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was pretty intense because uh, Glitchwitch was really starting to catch up right towards the end, uh, but you did manage to beat the boss and move on to the second auto-scroller. Glitchwitch didn't quite make it there. Uh, I, I was cheering for her because I'm like, I want to see the third game for sure. Like, I, I don't want any doubts because I love the third game. I mean, having tested it, it looks like a gem of a game, let me tell you. Yeah, well, uh, we'll, we'll see if you're both feeling up for that, but hello there, Glitchwitch! Hello, Percentia and Andy, and uh, wait, who do we else have here? Corntan, I guess. Oh, Hi. yeah. Corntan. It, it was real close at the end. Yeah, I um, I just couldn't get I, I cleared that first boss super fast and then just couldn't get it together with it for a while. And then like, oh, this is all very easy and kind of figured it out near the end. Yeah, that it was so long. That is sometimes what yeah. happens. Yeah, the... the... The auto scrollers are dumb, okay? Is the, is the second auto scroller as long as the first one? Because I don't think I can yeah. dodge all those tanks that long. So you're supposed to drop the missiles down to hit. Yeah, it's really hard to hit them. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh yeah. So this is one of the worst rated games um, for the Game Gear, and a lot of it based. Hope it is. It's not that bad. It's like, <laughs> not great. Here's the deal. Well, it's not great, I, but... I played this for hours as a kid. Never got past stage two. Never ever. Oh, well, show, just show this video to kid you and maybe he'll do a little bit better. Oh yeah, let me go ahead and invent time travel just to <laughs> dunk on myself. Yeah, that sounds great. Well, these well, two people played it for an hour and did better than you. Well, to be fair, you can dunk on yourself right now. Yeah. I, was... I mean, kid me probably deserves it too. What a jerk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but seriously, I, I had fun with this. The first game I really enjoyed as well, though I can't remember. Oh, yeah, Xandra's game. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was uh, that was a, that was a, uh... I'm impressed how you purged that from your memory so fast. <laughs> oh, no, trust me. It's right back. Uh, it's right here. That, that game is wonderful, and it's it's also it, very very frustrating. It made me so frustrated. I I came around and then didn't come around and then came around again. It it did a lot of things to my emotions. <laughs> I believe yeah, it. Like uh, honestly, I was sort of dying, uh, watching because there were so many times that you started to get hints about something that you could do, uh, specifically the flame jump, and then you just, uh either attributed it to a bug or just were like, I, I have no idea what it's doing. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And if you would have explored that a little bit more, you really could have come back. 
I really feel like I explored that as much as I was going to explore it. It was just kind of mashing on the keyboard and hitting every single button I could find. And be like, this is, something is going on here. And then like, maybe it's both buttons at the same time and I'd do it and nothing would happen. Like, well, okay. So maybe, I don't, I don't know. That, that, that was something else. And Andy, then the times what... it did happen, usually I'd get hit. Andy, what was well, the trick? It's, it's apparently frame perfect hit attack and jump at the same time. Yes. Apparently it's perfect frame. Yeah, it is the most. I didn't. I didn't frame. think about that. I just started mashing it when I realized I could just consistently get it just by face rolling my keyboard, just yeah. slamming it. I was thinking Andy's hands are probably gonna hurt after this. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hi. That's why I was kind of hoping about recording controls. I'm not a good left-handed masher. Hi, Zandra. You can. Hi. Hello, Zandra. Andy. Hi. Thank you... you so much for playing my game. I, I was really. It, it, it was a very game. It, it was... <laughs> I had to veto it because I'm like. Have I played this? Because I know I, I explored a bit of your backlog, but... Um, well, no, I didn't explore your backlog, so I didn't know what I was getting into. <laughs> <laughs> this this is, this is this game has been lost to history for a very long time until someone dug up all my old games from, like, the Internet Archive. This one was in there because I lost this one for, like, decades. Oh, well, I'm glad you brought it back to hurt us. Yeah, yes. not yep. only that, but Xandra had to put development work into porting it so that it worked on modern systems like <laughs> yep I, I, dedication. I, I mean you know you don't you don't get a you rarely get chances like this so like on the way to like my parents house for like christmas eve i just like on the bus loaded up like a new version of like click team studio and it happened to be able to read old files so i just pulled it up and then put in some uh new some new like uh interstitials between the levels and some ending and and liz actually had the game working on her like dos box machine with windows 95 on it and took screen caps of all the lore bits because those weren't those importable so, so i good. just put them back in there yeah teenage Xandra was a lot <laughs> <laughs> you had a lot of writing to do and a story to tell and then yeah. not a lot of iframes to put in there too just step in no. here to, to go through the important question that people are asking are we still playing game three I'll play uh, it. If, if people are down for game three, I'll play game three. I'll play I game really three want to play Oh, it. baby, because I definitely want you to play it. Cardan, was this another one of your picks? No, this is Tristan's <laughs> pick originally. Who's? Tristan. Tristan. Oh, Tristan. Tristan picked it originally for um, the Cusa Grande Invitational on GDQ's channel. Where oh, we made yeah. Proton John and Smite mm -hmm. play it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me go ahead and get this ready real I, quick I, so that I can do the reveal. I think it's important to state that while this game was on the Cusa Grande Invitational, this is the updated and uh, quote-unquote fixed version. Th this is actually the fixed version, yes. Whatever the heck that's supposed to mean. <laughs> so, I honestly so, don't know. I do, um, but I'll let Tristan explain it here in a bit. This well, tells in that case, we definitely know who are person is who's choosing wow Tristan you got squished there sorry about that I don't know why your picture is so squished <laughs> like a little squished egg hello there uh let's go ahead and reveal it right now because there are probably people who are guessing right now it is lost in plantinus plantinus with this we say perfect I don't know <laughs> it's a frame Nobody input knows. to get from demo to game and not go all the way to options. Oh yeah. Nobody knows. Yeah, this one is something very special. Everybody, I want to say thank you as well to those who have been uh, dropping a lot of the subs, the, the gift subs as well. Honestly, that is uh, really going to help me pay out <laughs> to Andy. <laughs> I do want to say congrats. You get the trophy. You get the $500. Uh, Glitch Witch, you still do get some prizes. Neil Breen's Twisted Pair, up to $60 of games on Steam. Go ahead and hit me up whenever you want those. Uh, and I'll go ahead and try to pull stuff out of my savings account. Just, oh, just, in, time, just in time for GDQ. Yeah, for and, real. Uh, uh, but now we're going to clear you all out. So, no, no. Bro, yeah, get out of here. Oh god, I want, my, I want my last year's DVD too. Best of luck. Dang. Right. Yeah, bye everybody. We'll need it. I bet we'll be back. Yeah, let's see how you do. Good luck. Bye. Oh my gosh. 
oh my gosh, PRH99, thank you so much uh, for the gift subs there. Honestly, we had a lot. I'm not going to read them all out, but uh, seriously, it definitely will help. Uh, by the way, I do want people to know I'm not going to be at GDQ this year uh, because Justin still is not able to put weight on his hip. I'm just not going to be showing up for that. But Smite is here. Hello there, Smite. Hello. Oh my gosh. Are you coming to commentate this for us? <laughs> Am I coming to what? To commentate? Yes. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I mean, that, that sounds like the a rude way to introduce you, but you have played through... Have, have you beaten this whole game now? I've beaten all the content that was available when I when it was released. And then, so you beat up through World 2, and then the dev actually went and fixed it, which is a story in and of itself. Yes. Wait, what? The dev went and fixed the rest of this game? Yeah, if we've got time for the story, I can I can get we into that for you. We have time for the story. We will, uh, yes. So I gave this out in the Kusa Grande Invitational, and it was my intent for it to be the final game. Uh, and then I got, uh, I drew the short straw and ended up GMing Proton John versus Smite. So I went straight to my nuke, uh, as you do in a match like that. Oh yeah. Um, the guy who developed this came to find out about it and contacted me. Uh, <laughs> And he explained to me that I, I was mistaken. This was not a this was not a large scene group who wrote it like I thought it was. It was two guys, two kids actually at the time. Um, and we talked for a bit. And I told him that yeah, you know, I, I was surprised at Softlocks at the end of World Two. And he goes, No, it doesn't. <laughs> and he saw the vod, uh, and he's like, Yeah, there's there's a bug. And about a month ago, out of nowhere, he posted an updated version to MSX World going, yeah, this fixes a bug that causes the game to crash after World 2, uh, but I can't be held responsible if y'all actually play this. So we're making two people play this. Oh, I love it. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, developers, for putting the work in years and years later, making sure that the game works. Well, Smite, maybe you'll have to go back and play the rest of the content. I intend to. I'll never stop playing this. <laughs> yeah, so definitely uh, shout out to the... It was released under the banner of a group called MSX Friends Zoel, uh, which sounds a whole lot like uh, MSX Friends Munich, which is a large group, but Zoel is two people that lived in Zoel. Uh, and the, the guy that contacted me was a guy by the name of, uh, I believe, Arjun Bakur, who was uh, the lead programmer for this, and the other guy did like music and graphics and stuff, I believe. But uh, shout outs to Arjun for being such a good sport. I actually felt really guilty when I learned it was two kids who made it because I don't like dunking on that level of indie, but he was he was a real sweetheart about it. Sweet. Uh yeah, I'm checking right now to see if the players are ready. They may be taking a small break, which is understandable. Oh my gosh, I'm I'm so happy. I am so ridiculously happy. I'm glad we get to see this because this is, without a doubt, the strongest Cusa Grande title I have ever seen, and I am pretty sure will ever see. Yeah, this this, this game is amazing. I love game this techniques. game. It's got a really good soundtrack, amazing art, HD title screen. There are options to turn off the music and the music chip if you want which no is the same thing never do it <laughs> wait 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 there are two separate options for that you turn on audio and music chips and they're both changing the way the music sounds and there's no sound effects in game that i can remember so you, you're yeah, just turning there's... off the music there's no sound effects it's just the music the music's pretty good to be honest it's a slapper <laughs> it, it's something. I, I'm not sure who or what is being slapped, but... Question from Chad. Is it, uh, is it Guido Lost in Platinus, or did Guido make Lost in Platinus? It is... Can we get someone to show us the plots? 
just so everybody knows, let, let's go ahead and get started. Everybody spam all of your most Kuso emotes that you have. Spam them now because this is the last game. Uh, I would say that it matters, but it doesn't because Andy is the victor of Kuso Grande. Uh, however, bragging rights are on the line here. As soon as I see movement, I will start our timer. Who will be able to brag about beating the other person with Lost in Plantinus? I, I guess that's a no then. What? I can dramatically read the plot for you if you'd like. Oh yes, that would be great. <laughs> I think that would be amazing, yes. Actually, Think. There we go. Is, oh. uh, it, yeah, there he is. So yeah, you said when we see movement, but that's kind of a loaded term. <laughs> I was thinking of a completely different game, by the way. <laughs> oh, this game sucks. <laughs> oh, and I, I love, love it so much. You get used to it. You yep. do actually get used to it. Um, the first time I played this when I was looking for Cusa Grande tiles, my roommate was sitting in the, the beanbag chair behind me, looks at it and goes, wow, this is a platforming strategy game. It kind of is. I love this game so much. Like, the music is so good. This is like, that's 98% of the reason to play this game because this music is perfect. Okay, sorry. I, I'm so glad that the devs got a working version of this together so that you can actually play Past World 2. Like, how old did you say they were, Tristan? They, I, I didn't get an exact age. I believe the first contact I got from Arjun was him laughing that I gave so much credence to MS, MSX friends as well because he said um, the group was two teenagers that were messing around in a garage. I love this. I absolutely love it. Uh, Smite, are you ready to read us a story? Yeah, I just wanted to mention that Andy made an amateur Plantinus mistake there and hit the ceiling, which immediately kills all your momentum, and that's why he fell down that pit. Oh, no. How could you, Andy? Glitch Witch yeah. beat level one. This is, your, this is your champion ceiling hitter. <laughs> can't believe this guy. Oh, what yeah, a, we've, what we've a got new... a dunk on Andy now that it's now that he's the winner. It's mandatory. <laughs> yeah, and not only that, but he is an expert when it comes to platforming games. So doing that, shame. All right, take it away, Smite. Let's hear the dank lore. Yeah, I got it. I got it scrolling by here. So it kind of just it's just a black screen with text that rolls up, uh, and it's not very well spelled. <laughs> That's okay. our on a night when everything seemed to be all right. There was a stranger in Guido's house. It was his old enemy, Guido. Wait, he's his own enemy? He looks the same as Guido, but this Guido was poor. <laughs> okay. This Guido wanted to kill the good Guido, but he <laughs> fell and ran away because the good Guido woke up. Oh no! Good, <laughs> the good Guido ran after him, but couldn't get him. Oh, good. Guido couldn't sleep anymore, so he started thinking. Guido found some clouds, clues, about where the bad Guido could be. Guido was very tired now, so he decided he would think more the next day. When Guido woke up again, he began to pack some stuff, and after finishing his meal, he started on a journey. Guido didn't know where the journey would be a very long journey. <laughs> yeah, same. After a few days, Guido was in Hawaii. He started the battle against the weird creatures and the bad Guido. Fortunately, Guido could earn points, so he could buy energy if he wanted to. No, you can't. Will Guido succeed in finding his enemy? We will know it soon. Uh, I, I'm going to say no, but maybe. I honestly have no idea. So, by the way, what you're seeing is not lag. It is just... This this is how you move. It takes half a second or so to actually move. Yeah, it's three frames per second, just about. Like it's it's not very fast. 
It, is. it actually runs at a full 60 frames a second, as you can tell from the like starting menu. It's just that for whatever reason, the game only repaints the screen every 10 frames or so. It reads your inputs as though it were running at that frame rate, so the ticket to this game really is committing to holding down the button a lot. And um, when you need to jump straight up first, which you, as you sometimes do, you hold up and you wait until the frames update, and then you hold right. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a... That sounds like a good choice. So if you're holding right and you hit up to jump, uh, does it not jump? You will jump, jump eventually, but you can measure in a calendar how long it takes for you to actually jump. Oh, yeah, there's no. a chance you'll just walk off the ledge here. So you definitely uh, got to be careful about some things there. Like I see Glitch falling on those falling platforms. Uh oh. Um, Oh no! This is the big nemesis here. I forgot about the falling platforms. Uh, yeah. Welcome to video games, everybody. This was on the GDQ channel one day, <laughs> and I I have a feeling that they haven't had too many games that were less playable than this on there. Yeah. Or I mean, games. I wanted to really see how. Like, Andy's wheelhouse is platformers, and, and to a degree, uh, Glitch Witch's uh, wheelhouse oh, is no! platformers as well. Oh, no. I wanted to see how they would handle a game that is a platformer, that but does not follow any of the normal platformer rules, like updating at a reasonable frame rate. Yeah. You can jump on these enemies for value if you can pull it off. Does it give you points? Yeah, get your score. Are there extra the lives? No. 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 Oh. Um, there is talk in the opening demo about there being a shop you can buy health or lives in, but I, for the life of me, have not been able to find it. Oh, well, maybe after World 2. No, I took a... I, I, I was the poor sap that had to make sure that you could actually get past World 2 in this. Uh, so, at least not in the first half of World 3, there's not. Huh. I hope there are shops. I hope. <laughs> like, I, I want the devs to... Uh, to see somebody make it to a shop and, you know, spend all of those points. I wonder if one of the, one of the tools gives, like, you a few frames back. <laughs> like, you just start Err. buying frame rate. I can see it. Yeah, Okay, yeah, we're not, it's not just shifting over one square at a time, it's shifting over, like, half a square. Ooh, yeah, I like this. Yeah, block align platformers were not an unusual thing on the MSX, because the original MSX couldn't do um, hardware scrolling of any kind, so a lot of games are just block aligned. Yeah. And it's and definitely not surprising. It's, it's not surprising, no. And honestly, you know, this isn't impressive for the MSX. This is, uh, <laughs> I want to, I want to like lie and say something about this is impressive, but no, this is MSX. It's what you're seeing is essentially what you can do with the console or with the computer, I suppose. Nah, I mean, that's a little unfair to the MSX. For the example I hold up as to what you can do with the MSX is a game called Hina Tori. But that was made by Konami and, you know, not a small two-person, two-teenager scene group in a garage. Uh, this is pretty solid for what you can do messing around in a garage with no internet access. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that means that essentially the people making this, they had no access to code that they could really borrow unless they got magazines that had a little information about how to program uh but that was pretty much all that they'd have and you know you'd have to also program in the sprites in a lot of cases for these older like for for the older computers that you had you had to do that with atari for sure uh so honestly, there would have been a lot of work put into this. And, you know, things may look ugly. They may be really choppy. But if you're a teenager, this would be pretty freaking impressive.
I love this game. So since this is no, something that was thrown together by a, a scene group and distributed on BBSs and now on a uh, public fan site, I can just grab the link and share this lovely piece of art with people if they want to play it later. Please do. Like, I have... Look, the devs went and fixed a bug in the game for us. Yes, we have to share it with people. Absolutely. It's like that advanced edition patch from FTL. You have to appreciate the comeback. Free <laughs> update. <laughs> that falling platform thing in here, stage three, is the last of the new obstacles for the rest of, well, World 2, even. There's not really anything else. So once they've mastered this hardest foe, they'll be in good shape. Last download, one day, 22 hours ago. Yeah, that was probably um, the Kusa Grande GMs grabbing it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at all. I am adding this to uh, my bookmarks. Well, it might have been me. Uh, Christmas was new, so I had to get my brother a present. So. Oh, it might have been you? Yeah, got to give him Plantinus. Wait, did you give him this? I might have. What a loving smite. Sm How can I get this to run on the Switch? <laughs> well, hardware power isn't a concern. <laughs> oh no, it's like, it's not even Megabyte, you know? Go ahead and... Hey, Glitchwitch is on to level three. This is a pretty good amount of progress. Yeah. Yeah, so... The way it went in the invitational matches, both the racers kind of floundered around for a bit until it clicked that this is literally a turn-based platformer. And then both Smite and Proton John were getting into World 2 regularly. Oh yeah, far into it. as soon as you think of this not as a standard platformer, you can start dealing with a lot of stuff. The load times are killer because it's hard to come back from uh, you died in World 8 here and you have to go all the way back to one. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's true. Just because you have to like navigate the world map. Every level you go in has a five second loading time of black screen. Yeah, and I came very close to not using this because of that, but I I had to. I mean look at it. This is mandatory. Yeah. What do you think of those spikes that are in the form of pink babies there on uh, Glitch Witch's screen? <laughs> oh, Very yeah. Hazardous. The babies kill you. I it mean, is. it's about yeah. accurate. Everything that's not the ground, a platform, or <laughs> a item box will kill you if you touch it, basically. You can jump on some things, but it's incredibly inconsistent what you can and can't. Murder babies. The worst kind of baby. <laughs> And babies are already the worst kind of humans. I can't disagree with that. Well, yeah, <laughs> I can. Wow. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just embracing the music in this. Like, here's the deal: for teenagers putting something dorky together. It doesn't even have to be playable. If you've got good music, that's really going to make it enough for me to enjoy. And I can genuinely enjoy this based off of the music. So definitely something I want to mention that uh, chat has pointed out already, but I, for the purpose of the VOD, I will point out uh, the player character is actually animated. What? He actually has a walk cycle. Oh, that's right. Isn't it just one pixel that changes? It's two pixels on his right knee that just change back and forth. I forgot about that. Okay, let me let me maximize it again so I can see it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Why would they animate that? Devs, I love you. I hope that they did that on purpose and thought it was funny. I really hope so. I actually never got the story behind that. 
Um, I had brought up at one point that I was curious about the frame rate and I, I don't think I ever really got an explanation because we were just passing messages back and forth on Twitter. I should go back and ask about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go back and ask. You can also say, hey, we had the game again. Thank you for updating it. Uh, explain the pixels that change. Is that on purpose or absolutely an accident? Yeah, yeah, Tristan. And you need to at me as well. I want to be looped into the conversation. I need to find out. I need the answer. It's good that this is on the keyboard because of the deliberate way that you hold down the, the buttons. Yeah, I assume yeah. both racers are using keyboard controls for this because while gamepad does kind of work under retroarch i don't believe it was ever intended to be the control input method for the original msx version yeah when you're it... playing a uh, turn-based platformer you want strong keys i think i agree with you honestly like just being able to know if it's yes or no if it you know the switch is on or off uh would so you gotta use a mechanical help. keyboard yeah <laughs> This is a platformer you could play with two levers. I think I would play. I, I would give it a shot like that. I think yeah. it would be easier. Can you even go left in the game? Yeah, but uh, you can't back scroll. You can only just go left on the screen. It says, or can you back scroll? I don't remember. I don't know. That would be sophisticated. Not very, but a little bit, you know. Uh, Glitch Witch is getting the points. That's all that matters, you know, the points. Absolutely. So Chad is trying to figure out what the walk cycle is supposed to be, and I think the best take so far is that it's supposed to be a booty shake, but the player character is in the uh, comic book broken back pose. It's you shaking your booty while having your broken back. Well, you know what the broken back pose is, right? Uh, that pose right there that he's doing right now? No, it's uh, it's a pose that uh, comic artists draw uh, female characters in so they can point their rear and their chest at the viewer at the same time. Oh, gotcha. Oh, I know what you're talking about now. I, I thought that you were talking about him literally, like, throwing his back out. He's like, that's why he's so stiff, you know? Can't really move too much when you have your back thrown out. Well, if you manage to take the pose I'm talking about, you would throw your back out. Yeah, it's true. Oh, I can see that pose now. Okay. Just imagine the line is his butt. And there you have it. His butt is on his thigh. <laughs> thigh butt. Some people have thigh butts, you know? How does that... that I want to know how that works physically speaking for, like using the bathroom but that may be how you end up with an exploding toilet uh yeah uh we'll we'll talk about that on a different stream so smite i heard that you're finishing your triathlon after us yes work in progress <laughs> we can talk about thigh butt during the um thigh butt. Cusa grande finale celebratory monster prom stream that i just totally roped you into doing oh my gosh i want to do that but not today oh yeah not today but at some point maybe for sure uh yeah smite actually uh, you should totally uh, tell all of our community when you have signups for the triathlon because i want to get involved i want to play this next time and i am really bad <laughs> at catching messages uh, unless people like at me, so you like have to at me be... fifty times and just yell at me. I'll probably do it in April. Okay, cool. I That's fine. I really want to play. So, uh, yeah, Smite has arcade pit. Most people here are familiar with it at this point, but if you're not, it's a fun little game show. Uh, 
where you answer questions and then you do crappy drawings, which I'm not sure if the drawings are necessarily worse than Lost in Plantinus, but they get pretty much on this level. Uh, and play video games, it's it's great fun. Yeah, we actually have a live panel here in a week at MAGFest. Yeah, if you're going to MAGFest, be sure you stop by there uh, for the panel. I want to do a panel somewhere, but I'm like not going anywhere right now because I gotta take care of Justin and make sure that uh, he doesn't fall again. So we're 20 minutes in, and I'm gonna be perfectly honest. I've mainly just been enjoying watching everyone fall down pits. I don't know what level each racer has reached. I believe the high water mark at the moment is level three. I think so. So the way this works, um, it's not as important early in the game, but especially as you move on to later worlds, it becomes more important. Um, the maps are not linear. You can do levels in different orders, but you can only progress to the next world when you've finished every stage in a world. So it largely comes down to how many you've done in whatever order you want. Level, or I'm sorry, world three especially, is just this clover leaf, and you can go in three different directions right from the start. And from each of those directions, you can go in two different directions from those. So you can do one of like six levels in whatever order you want. Ooh. I feel like they're getting the hang of the hardest obstacle. Falling platforms that stop your inputs from working. Yeah, it yep. sounds really difficult. There is a yeah. method to it, and they seem to be figuring it out. For the most part, you just have to hold jump on them because uh, as long as you're holding jump, which is, by the way, up, this is an up to jump game, um, you will buffer jumps. And then you can't really have your uh, your controls locked out. Okay, Andy is moving on to the next level. I don't know which one it is, so that's cool. I think it's level four. So Andy possibly has the lead in the, the the strategy platformer what's your favorite enemy do you like the red orbs or the ufos i'm a fan of the ufos personally okay yeah i'm definitely a ufo person what about you are you a fan of the red orbs i think so They're okay. i was afraid to jump on the ufos but you can and smash them ah do they, do they have a separate sprite for being smashed? No. I mean, they might, but it's not displayed. Oh, <laughs> it's, okay. Maybe, maybe it's one of the frames that are cut. <laughs> okay, UFO time. Uh, Andy uh, not smashing the UFO. That's unfortunate. Like, I'm not sure Andy knows that he can smash him. I don't know. I think At he's one trying point, I to. Believe, I believe Andy landed on a uh, spike baby and died and now will not try to land on anything else. There's a couple of problems you run into in, in a Kuso running environment blind in a game like this that uh, I'll ask you viewers what you think you would answer because um, the problems that you have to come up with when you're trying to compete. Uh, do you bother with these exclamation blocks not knowing? I mean, I know the answer now. There's no extra lives in this. Going in, though, sometimes there are. You never know. You might get an extra life and get in a bunch of points. There are some diamonds that show up soon. I think Andy's getting there. Do you touch them? <laughs> they're new. Or they're in the sky. They look like pickups. But in a game like this where you grab something like that and if it kills you, all of a sudden you just lost like 10 minutes. <laughs> I love so... all the... They're almost moral conundrums. <laughs> yeah. It's the trolley car problem, except you're choosing between suffering with a bad game and suffering with a bad game and suffering with another bad game later. Oh no, Andy! Uh, I th yeah, he you. is game over. We did not see the diamonds. So yeah, my, my question is, Smite, what did you choose? Did you choose to touch the diamonds or <laughs> not? I I avoided them the first pass, but then I went for them later and they I found out they're just one point a piece i tried messing with the the blocks too but none of them had anything in them you know you, you would hope for a mushroom or something equivalent at least but there's nothing Just i love points. it i love it so much 
Like, that's the th most games, you know, they have things for a reason. But when it's two teenagers making it in a garage and, you know, you get uh, three frames per second, when lucky, when lucky, mind you, uh, you know, you just have to make choices that uh, and realize that they may not have known how to develop a game and put mm -hmm. things in that make sense. And that is certainly the case with this game. What drove so, me to grab the diamonds is that I was having an incredibly hard time winning, and I thought, maybe I'm missing something. These diamonds could give me flight or something. <laughs> maybe I have a rocket pack. <laughs> Did it turn out that you were missing anything? I wasn't holding the buttons hard enough. You gotta I, really commit. I know what you mean, because when I was playing through this to test it, I started, like, mashing the keys. Like, come on, if I, if I press it harder, I'll jump faster. Surely that's how it works, right? Well, I, I think that is... basically you just have to keep holding jump in order to go high enough. And that was yeah. your flaw. It's like it only reads your input once every tenth of a second. So if you hold it in, like really, it's a binary. If you hold it in, it will read it for sure. And if you don't, you're probably not going to pull it off. You could, but you're really risking he just won't jump. And you need him to jump sometimes with the falling platforms and stuff. Oh yeah. Actually, let me see. Are the are the competitors talking at all about this? Uh, yeah, they are definitely talking in Discord. Yeah, I can't. We can't see that. You're gonna have to enlighten us. <laughs> yeah, Glitch Witch said, "I'm beating this game. I'm calling it. Oh. Maybe not today, but I'm gonna do it." Oh, that is a tall order because this um, <laughs> game has eight worlds. Now that Arjun has fixed it. And we got to world 1.5 in the hour invitational match. So that is a tall order. I don't think me and John made it to world two. Actually, I think me me and him only made it to, uh, I made it to like the last level before the final level in world one and he got stuck on the final jump in world one. Yeah, so I remember I had to actually take a screenshot of world two and show off how awful it looked. Also, Andy did say, a little while ago, Ack, I dead. I was gaming until I wasn't. It's only been 24 <laughs> minutes of this. I felt like I've aged like four years. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they love this game. At least There's, one person uh, loves this game. There is a checkpoint at World, every world, I think, is how it works. So you don't get a checkpoint yep. until you've mastered. I mean, once you've gotten this first checkpoint, there's not really anything in in world two that's new so you could just keep it up you could uh keep on rolling is there anything new in world three not that i saw and yeah so the way the continue okay. system works when you game over you start over at the beginning of the world you left off on so if one of our racers got to world two they would be on world two for you know ever they would never get sent back to one but uh we got to get there first yeah it's beautiful as well i hope we get to see it <laughs> After playing this in the uh, Invitational and then coming to my own broadcast and trying to beat what, what content there was, I pretty much speed ran through World 1. I had mastered all of this and I didn't have very much trouble with World 2 either because uh, it's, I mean, there's not really that many obstacles. There's not a whole lot of change. It's just different shapes of the same thing. So you just have to figure out what they're looking for. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, I was actually going to run this in Big Bad Gamathon, and then Arjun let me know that there were supposed to be eight worlds, and I just went, no, <laughs> no. Eight? There I eight. believe he said eight. Uh, it's either seven or eight or somewhere in that region, but it's definitely definitely a lot more than two. You could just uh, as I said do one dash one and call that a speed run. <laughs> pretty much. It's long enough. Uh, yeah, as I said before, the version I gave out in the Invitational softlocked after the end of World 2, the trigger that was supposed to fire when you beat all of the World 2 levels to send you to World 3 just didn't, and you got left on the world map with nowhere to go and you're softlocked. Um, the fixed version does indeed fix that. I was able to confirm it, and I didn't go very far past the middle of World 3 before calling it good. How does World 3 look? Does it look any better than 1 or 2? I have a screenshot. I'll share it one moment. Please do. I would love to see it. World 2 is despicable looking if you haven't seen it. You mean perfect looking? It um, It's all 
white and bright pink red. The sky is burning. Like I said, perfect. And there's flags in the back, uh, trying to decide if they're crossbones or babies. I'm not sure. Maybe they're crossbone babies. I honestly, you know, you said that, and I'm trying to imagine the. But I can't. I can't imagine what you're describing. And it's not because it was a bad description. It's just I can't imagine it. So since we're not going to see World 3, I'll put a screenshot of it in uh, Twitch chat. I love goldfish. That's Oh, yeah, the goldfish. Uh, do you swim? No. Oh. Well, I was hopeful for a second, but yeah. Less hopeful now. Yeah, so World 2, I used to have a screenshot of World 2. I don't anymore, I don't believe. But World 2 is uh, Strawberry Cake Land, which is just like neon pink, like hex code, like F88 pink. Oh, baby. It's pretty eye searing. I like it. Dude, this music is too good. Like, I wonder if this was just one of the stock songs that they managed to put in here. Uh, the music, as I understand it, was farmed in from another group. It wasn't just lifted. It was taken with permission, but it wasn't the devs who wrote it. Here, okay. I'll give you oh, the screenshot. You're like... the <laughs> screenshot. This is from my Let's Play of Plantinas. I'm ready for you. The important thing to note is that the ground and the enemies are red, so they're almost impossible to see in this world. The biggest hurdle is your eyesight disappearing on you. Not your I'll eyesight disappearing on you. Too. Oh, no. What is this screenshot? Oh, that's World 2. Oh, you're right. It could be a baby or a skull and crossbones. I don't know. Smite, the description was so much better than I ever could have thought. It's perfect. So it looks like Glitch Witch is hunting for power-ups now, which uh, she's going to be disappointed. There there aren't any. I feel like I want to beat this sometime. Well, I do have 33 months of subscription and have never given you a sub game. I could give you three hours of this in three months. Oh, no. I mean, you could. Glitch Witch is insisting that there has to be a secret and she's going to find it, and... There's not. I wish her luck. There could be. No. I... <laughs> absence of evidence is not evidence of absence, but I've never found one, and I looked. You can look into the code, okay? And if the code doesn't say it, then it doesn't exist. The hell are MSX games written in? What's the, it can't be assembly. <laughs> Since I was the first one, I think, to try and speedrun this game, I have I have dibs on what these terms for techniques are called, right? Oh yeah, yeah, Is that yeah. How this works? Yep. Well, I called it a maverick jump when you need to jump straight up and then turn right. And Andy died because he didn't do one. He didn't, he didn't do didn't a do maverick a... jump. Yeah, that's right. He needs to jump up and then hold right to get across the spikes that are in the way. I can appreciate that. Like, which Maverick are we talking about? Like, the TV show? Oh, probably Launch Octopus. He's a good Maverick. Oh, okay. He does jump straight up quite a bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah part of the evidence of the game actually running in 60 FPS, even though it doesn't look like it, is that if you um, press up and right, like a tenth or even a twentieth of a second apart, like you just, you stagger your fingers and push them down, you will actually jump straight up for a frame and then start moving right. So it definitely reads your input at 60 FPS. It's a surprisingly useful technique is to jump one tile up and then hold right. It works on so many things in this. I think you need to do it at some point. You need to start doing it, uh, especially when the, the pink baby spikes become plentiful enemies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Glitch Witch is getting used to the Maverick jump. Eventually, I just reached a point where if I wasn't on a falling platform, I came to a complete stop, made sure I was stopped, 
and then did the staggered up and then right jump to make sure that I not only jumped on the tile I was standing on, but that I started moving right. Both of <laughs> Glitch Witch's comment is exactly what I was hoping for from this being the final match of Cusa Grande 4. Yeah, she said, if Cusa Grande had a final boss, it would be this game. Yes, <laughs> yeah. that's exactly what I was going for. I mean, I agree. I'm not going to lie. It's strange, though, because I'm like, I'm absolutely captivated by the game. It's so bad but endearing at the same time like i'm i'm in love with the main character here they're doing it's better so bad and yet i respect the people who made it so much yeah andy's still not doing the maverick jumps though i'm very uh, concerned about that it's gonna bite him in the butt sometime yeah Glitch which just did two in a row and they are essential when that's what happens is there's there's one tile of space to work with and a spikes in the way you have to do it You don't have an option. You don't have any room to do a, a regular diagonal jump. Ah, so, yeah, they're saying Andy, by the way, is agreeing with Glitch Witch that this would be the Cusa Grande final boss. Smite, I'm so glad that you love this game so much. It's great. I'd like to finish it myself. I gotta get on that. You know, who's gonna be the first person in the world to complete this game? It should have. I would have finished it. If I if I had the means, I would have finished it that day. Because it was literally not beatable until about a month ago. Glitch Witch has come to a stop and is just, like, shrieking in horror at this. <laughs> Three Maverick jumps in a row. Oh, oh wow. nope. Didn't hold up long enough. Nope. Gotta commit. I feel like you don't really release the up button at all. There's no reason to stop jumping high in this game. So, uh, another funny story is that at some point, I don't remember exactly when, but there was a point where I had kind of used most of my arsenal. I, I had stepped back from GM in quite as much as I was, um, and we were in the beginning of brackets, so Glitch Witch wasn't getting as many matches as usual. And she came to me and she said, do you have a game you can just give me to play that is probably not going to get in? You know, just I, I want to play one of the games you have because I, I like your picks so much. And I was going to give her this, and I almost did. Uh, and then that was like the same day that I got pulled in to GM the Proton John and Smite match. Yeah. So I, I pulled back from giving this to her to play, and I'm so glad I did. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, here's the deal. How do you have precise, like... Precision platforming in a strategy game. Faith. <laughs> you just, you have faith. You hold down right just long enough that you know the game has taken it, and you just hope that you snap over into the other tile before you hit the spike baby. Okay. She's got, got it down. She's got it. Glitch which got it. past the baby gauntlet. The baby gauntlet? <laughs> That's what it was! The baby gauntlet. Three babies in a row. Ready. It's a skill you just lay check. a bunch of babies on the ground and make someone run across it, and if you step on a baby, you feel bad about yourself. All right, so Glitch Witch is on to level six. I believe this is a lead. Yeah, this yes. um, next couple levels are pretty easy. Level nine there is brutal. Nine and ten are the next big stopping points. Yeah. I think there's, there's I mean, one more thing here, and it's... Uh, it, it's what stopped us for the most part when we did it to, to figure out. I'd and say it's in level nine. I'd say most frames are a big stopping point in this game. <laughs> oh. Every frame is a mistake, and you're able to count every single one of them. Oh yeah. So many mistakes. Yeah. Where we shared the World 2 screenshot, we still have people coming in and going, ow, my eyes, what is this? It It's so ugly. I hope that we get to see it in the flesh. 
It does look like flesh, doesn't it? Yeah. Tasty flesh. Uh, the end of World 6 is uh, three empty screens walking. Uh-oh, Andy's getting close to the baby gauntlet. I want to see what he thinks. Rosentia, have you ever encountered a baby gauntlet? Uh, yeah, what what was that game where you skateboard in the park? So many babies. Uh-oh, Glitch Witch sees the diamonds. Do you go for them? Uh, yep. They look so dangerous. They do. Okay, baby gauntlet coming up soon. I can't wait. Back to the future? No, 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 the other one with all the babies in the park. In fact, I can't remember any babies in Back to the Future. Okay, baby right, gauntlet. here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and he immediately uh, put in chat, oh, is it the three jerks that are jerks? And the answer is, yeah. Well, <laughs> here's the vine that's instantly there when you hit the block. It's a good vine. It's a solid ladder. Oh, and and... hey, it's a new mechanic this late into the game. Yeah. Look, this is World 1. It's not it late, like into, it's the late game. into the game. Leave me alone, person. <laughs> okay, okay. That was well done. Survived. Wow. Fantastic. Glitch Witch is uh, still plowing through this. Two lives left. That's pretty significant. Uh, honestly, uh, I'm a little bit concerned there's probably going to be at least one or two more game overs before finishing the world. Unless Andy's she goes slow. Behind. Yeah, one of the uh, things you have to just deal with is that uh, it's really hard to get around the enemies, so you just kind of wait for them to walk past and jump straight up and let them run under... Yeah, it seems to be that if there are enemies moving on the screen, your jumps are delayed even more than usual. <laughs> so good. I will say, if anyone is considering trying to play through this entire thing, please don't use RetroHerch. Use an emulator that actually supports save states for your own sanity. Uh, I can no. set you up with open MSX. I'd do a pure run. I'm going to beat this game with no states. There we go, Smite. That's that's what I... Yeah. I don't really like to hear that, but, you know. I, I got to get the world record, and that's unofficial. You can't use states. What? <laughs> can't do that. Andy is a little bit upset about something. Oh, let's just have trouble with the hard platforming. Oh no, and that's it. Back to the beginning of the game. Get back. You really have to commit there. It's it's measured just right. Carefully, obviously the devs put a lot of time into making sure it was exactly the right distance for your jump. I mean, you know, for everything we can see about this game, one thing that I'm willing to go to bat for is I'm pretty sure they took the care to make sure the thing is actually doable. It sure is. <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't happen with every game we see here. I mean, what like the the bunny bunny race, whatever it was called, the one with the car and you were platforming and you were a bunny. Well, that section of the it looks really bad, but if you commit to it and get the right distance on it and just hold both buttons down, you're probably gonna make it. It's actually really exact. It's it's like a speed running course in. Mario Maker, it just works. It just works out. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like one of those hold right, jump. You're good. Yeah, it is. <laughs> they had one method they wanted you to use, and if you can work out what it is, you're probably good. Oh, yeah. So Andy has quite the opportunity to pull into the lead here. Actually, may have already. I'm not entirely certain. Has not. Gonna not do one more quite. level. Yeah. This next level is where Glitch couldn't make that one jump. From falling platforms to two blocks in, in space. Why? Oh, it'll be fine, I'm sure. Why? Why would, why would you do this? 
Well, maybe they got bored with the early levels. They're like, oh, these are too easy now. Let's just throw in some crap. One thing There's that... a couple of really oh. mean tricks in uh, the end of World 2, like um, having to pick a path and one of them just ends in a pit and you can't go anywhere and you die. Well, that sounds fun. Okay, there we go. Andy got that jump. Some more jump. He's, he's just jumping all over. Okay. There's a baby, Andy. Watch out. Don't want don't want to touch the baby. He's looking at the diamonds right now. Oh, he decided the diamonds are deadly. He did not go for any of them. Or at the very least, he's decided he doesn't care about them. All right, here we go. Can Andy make it across the one tile platform? Oh no! no oh my maybe. gosh! What? Oh whoa! He managed to go backwards. Oh my! I, I disagree with what just happened, but okay. It looks like he made it across those. Oh, more dumb baby jumps. Okay. Baby gauntlet number two. A perfect Maverick jump. Yeah, he's he's getting good at these Maverick jumps. And there we go. Andy is through that stage. I really appreciate the divot at the end, though. It really gives it some character. Was some that shape. a lead change then? Yes. Good job. Glitchwitch could still get back, though. Like, Andy only has two lives left and is on level nine, which is a little rough. We may get to see Strawberry Cake slash Flesh World. It all comes yep. down to one jump. <laughs> There's one jump here that's really nasty. Uh-oh. I love that it can move at this frame rate and still be as difficult as it is. Oh no. Skinny platform. Okay. Reminds me of playing Mario on my TI-86 calculator. Oh, yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. So there's uh, this level and one more for uh, Andy in World 1, and then we'll get to see World 2. And Andy will be signposted there, uh, gaming over in World 2, sends you back to the beginning of World 2. Yep. So remember, Andy has already become the Kuso 4 champion. This is for bragging rights. If he can go 3-0, that's then he can brag. Yeah, that that's it. That's the only reason they're playing Lost on Plantinus. Andy stubbed his toe on a baby. Wow, that was not a difficult part at all. I mean, comparatively. Andy only has one life left. He needs to be careful. Don't stub your toe on babies. So there's, if we look at this finale, the trio of games we selected, we had two games that were made by teenagers as like fan works that are arguably not very professionally created. And then you have Robocop, which was a game people actually bought on a cartridge for money. Oh yeah. What does that say about Robocop? Honestly, I think I would rather play this than Robocop. Like, I'm not even lying. I agree. <laughs> I'm not playing Robocop. I'm going back to Plantinus. I gotta beat it. I gotta beat all eight worlds. Yeah. I think after Corn Dan's run as a GM, we're just gonna, like, put all Robocop ever in the tubing bin after this. Yeah, Robocop tubing. Go in there. I just can't get enough of these hot jams. I just, I could listen to this all day 
unironically once. Not every day, you know, just one day listening to it all day and still, you know, come out with most of my sanity. It would be great. All right, Andy has one more level in World 1. I don't think we saw level 10 in the uh, Invitational race. I'm not sure. I don't know. There's a part where you have to ride a falling platform so that you don't hit the ceiling. You have to fall a couple of tiles, and that's what stopped Proton John. Oh, okay. That makes sense. I didn't notice if he's done that or not. That's the it's really close to the end of World One. I don't remember exactly where it is. Yeah, I think somehow you lost the rest of your sanity playing this game, Smite. Like, you've never been quite the same after this game. I'm in good spirits. <laughs> this game I... cured my depression. Oh, good. Snake oil. That's what this game is. I love the climbing. It's so good. I would say the climbing animation, but no. I think it's coming up. I think the, we saw this level. I'm not 100%, but I feel like it's around here, that jump. And knowing that the ceiling is death, the touch, is part of the yeah. issue. I oh, think it was this right there here. we go, that jump. <laughs> there Andy goes Andy. Andy hit the ceiling. He's tied with Proton John officially. He has tied Proton John. <laughs> Let's see if Glitch Witch can make it that far. The th yeah, this is this is Glitch Witch's match to win if she can manage to do the dumb jump. Yeah, it's it's all coming down. Like I I got there I, when I played it again later, and I heard Proton John mention that. He hit the ceiling there, and so I didn't. I just looked at it and realized immediately what you're supposed to do. He was talking about how he didn't understand how to even do it. But as soon as I got there myself, knowing that he had trouble with it, I worked it out. You just fall a tile and then hold up. You gotta wait. You gotta be patient. It's it's like an opposite Maverick jump. <laughs> Call it a gravity jump. A gravity jump. Oh, I like that. A gravity jump, just basically don't jump right away. Follow a little bit and then use those springy legs of yours. Not very springy. Like, I'm, I'm not sure you're even touching the ground. The magical levitation shoes of uh, Plantinus. I'm, I'm glad that he found those. Wasn't in the story, but it's important. Well, I know he just got out of bed in the story. He kept going back to sleep, so I felt like he's wearing slippers. Oh, they're probably slippers. Oh, that actually explains a lot about the clothes. Yeah, pajamas. I can't tell if he's wearing glasses or not. Maybe he's just really glass-eyed from waking up. He's got up. bed hair, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I've always seen is he just has a really dead-eyed, creepy look directly <laughs> at the player. What? Uh, the player character is looking straight toward the player. I thought he was looking straight to the right. No, the the pupil in his eye is on the right side of his eye looking straight at you. I mean, if it's a single pixel, then it's pretty much always looking at you. I mean, that's how pixels work. You can't really, like, craft a pixel in you. Okay, let me look. He's looking straight at you. It Oh, that is the right side of his... Oh my gosh, that is creepy. Well, because of the um, the loading times, I don't feel like Andy's gonna... I was in this position. Uh, I died in like World 1-8, and I knew that because of the loading and the length of the levels, you, you're not getting back there. I don't think he's gonna have another shot at that jump. Oh, there's Glitch no Witch chance. Glitch has a chance if she motors to get back there. Yeah, I think Glitch, if they don't die anymore... Uh, they could do it on this run here. They still have time. True. Last chance. I don't Andy think wishes to go. report that he's tilted out of the cosmos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
as far as placements go, since people in chat are asking about it, Andy got or yeah, Andy got to basically the last jump in World One, and Glitchwitch is a bit behind that and is uh, struggling to catch up from a game over. So we're all seeing if Glitchwitch can essentially beat World One to decide if she takes the lead or not. Yeah, basically. Uh, if there she... is. Yeah. There's a there's a little bit more content, if you want to call it content, after that falling jump, like gravity jump. But it's not new and difficult. That's definitely the hardest, trickiest part. I just realized the planet looks like watermelon, and I want to eat it, and that makes everything so much better. It does look like watermelon. Oh no, I Abby. suppose this is this is Hawaii. This is what Hawaii looks like. Hawaii looks like watermelon. I've never been there. Well, okay. Can somebody who has actually been to Hawaii tell us if it looks like watermelon? <laughs> Yeah, this is the third game of the day. Andy has already won, but will he be able to take the Lost in Planetus uh, bragging rights? We'll, we'll have to see what Glitchwitch can do with these last two lives of hers. Making it pretty well through the part that got her last time. Okay. More babies. Just don't deal yep, with... And... Yeah. And once again, it's going to be a close match either way, because uh, Glitchwitch had gotten to level 8 and is going to be making progress now on that. Andy made it to 10, uh, but I expect that Glitchwitch will be very close in the you know, next four minutes. Yeah, I'm so glad there's not a timer in this game. <laughs> can I just say? Oh my. And devs, you can measure it in frames. if you're listening, no, don't you dare put a timer in. I'm pretty sure any patches we see to this game are bug fixes. I don't think we have to worry about new features. Can you just imagine them putting in a timer that actually works 60 frames per second? And, you you know, you can see the hundredths of a second rolling on by. That would be so amazing. Glitch is having a lot of trouble with these cubes. Thankfully, he's doing it over the part where the land is, but gonna have to master it before we're too far in here. Yeah, this I is... I think the main problem she's having is she's buffering uh, jump and immediately jumping as soon as she touches the top of the first cube. This shouldn't be, hopefully, a problem. Oh, jeez. Oh! Oh, no! no. Oh, 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 no, oh, no! Oh, that might be it. I think that's it. Oh, no. That's okay. We'll see what she's able to do. One uh, life left. One life left. Last life. I think Andy's just doing backflips into pits for fun at this point because he I knows like he it. can't get back there. Well, yeah, we need him to keep playing because he gives us the music. That's it. If he stops before time, I'm revoking the title. I don't think I have the power to do that. You, it's your tournament. Well, that would be mean. Hey, can I be the one? It's winner? your tournament. <laughs> sure, Smite, you I, win. I, I didn't even register. Hell yeah. Oh, heck yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I've oh, been no. demoted now for that. Jeez. Uh, yeah, I'm you're sorry. no longer the champion. Ah. Oh, jeez. Ah. You can say hell. It's fine. <laughs> like, that's barely even a swear. I got Matty here with me. Can he win something? I have a hundred bucks. Thanks. <laughs> sure. hundred awesome. bucks. Yeah. It is very definitely coming down to the wire, but Glitch Witch, I believe, has one more level before uh, where we had left off with Andy. It's theoretically possible, Glitch Witch, get the jump. Yeah. No. Oh, no! So that death pit extends a block above the bottom of the screen. I'm going to call it. Whatever. That's it. Yeah, oh, it's over. That's time. Plantinus claims another soul. Ah, oh, what I'm a, so what glad a video they, game. they were both willing to do this because I really wanted the finale to include this little uh, PowerPoint presentation. And it, as it turns out, Andy got three to zero. Andy definitely earned that title of the Cusa Grande Grand Champion. Yeah, I will say there were some 
some concerns that because the upper bracket finalists didn't get much of an advantage, that eh, blah blah blah. Andy took it 3 0. I, I think that's pretty decisive. Oh, yeah, it for sure is decisive. Oh my gosh, that was an absolute blast. Hello there, Andy. Yeah, come on in for a slight uh, cool down. It was so bad. <laughs> It was so bad. Oh, you were saying no. something about if you looked in the telescope, we would see you, like, orbiting the sun yeah. very far away. Yeah. Hi! Hi! Hi. That thing was cool. Yeah, it's certainly a thing. I kind of really enjoyed it. Um, it was alright, but it, like, it kind of controlled, like, um... What's the... What is the word I'm thinking of? What? Um, it controlled, like... You are on ice skates and an ice rink, but there was no ice. <laughs> yeah. It's like a spherical cow in a vacuum with zero friction. See, yeah. the problem is you're wrapping your mind around controls as if it were used with buttons, when it really should be more like you have two light switches, and one of the light switches can be in three positions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, uh, you know, we keep saying that this is a strategy platformer, and I think that's how you have to think about it. You also had to buffer your dick off for everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but... Pardon my language. Well, whatever. <laughs> it's the end. <laughs> we did so, it. Freedom. So, uh, Glitchwitch had said she was gonna beat this game. Uh, do you want to know how long it is? Yeah, it hit Three me. worlds, ten levels apiece. Um, I don't believe it's three. I have to double check now. I was under the impression it's eight. That wouldn't surprise me if it was That's eight. so many. Like, if, is so there you, any way to get more lives? You said, you said when you continue, you start at the beginning of a world, right? Yes. Okay, so, you know, once you get past the first world, how hard could the rest of the game be? Uh, I did finish World 2. They do get a bit harder, but I, I think if you you know, utilize the continues and were willing to like stamp down a save state or something at the beginning of a world when you can't take it anymore and come back later, you can eventually get through it. Yeah, and was there I'm... any way to get extra lives? I got, When I got nah. to level 9 with one life, I was like desperately hitting every single block praying. I was like, please, oh, I did that too! Please! <laughs> I started hitting blocks and it's like Maybe it's a hundred points, I don't know. To my knowledge, there's no way to get power-ups or extra lives of any kind. The demo implies that there's a shop somewhere, but I've never been able to find it. Oh, great. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, once you beat World 1, you get checkpointed in World 2. That's very nice of it. Very, very nice of the game. Yeah, only ten levels to beat before you get that checkpoint. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, ten very simple levels that definitely aren't that challenging, maybe. Everyone should play that game, by the way. Oh yeah, absolutely. It was time absolutely. Out and play that game. It's a game that that you gotta touch it. Oh yeah. And let it touch you yeah, and just the, the eye, connect with it. Eyes, watching it does nothing for you, believe me. You have to play it to understand just how impossible this game is to control. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I still... Plantius World Record is up for grabs. Yeah, Anyone nobody's beaten it. it, as far as we know. Uh, oh, I do love that the devs specifically went, uh, after they found out that we had this on the GDQ channel, they went and fixed the game so it's actually beatable now. What, it, what, what was unbeatable about it? Uh, once... It would softlock at the end of uh, World 2, Level 10. You would return to the world map and just not be able to go anywhere because you would beat all the levels. Because, yeah, because you were still on World 2's map. Oh, yep. that's awesome. Uh, great. Yeah, well, they were teenagers developing on the oh. MSX before the internet existed. Actually, no, sure. um, it, it works, as far as I understand, it worked on a hardware MSX. It's the emulator that was the problem. What? Um, and they just went in and coded in oh. a case for the emulator. Oh, that's, that's actually cool. very nice of them. Again, I'm very nice of them to fix this video game that we just had to play for an hour. Yeah, yeah definitely. I, I Like I said, uh, to give credit, uh, the group that did it is uh, two teenagers in a, in a garage group called MSX Friends Zoel. And uh, the dev that reached out to me and fixed it was a guy by the name of uh, Arjun Bakur. Um, very nice guy. He was very much a sweetheart about having his game uh, showcased in uh, Cusa Grande. So I do appreciate the hell out of 
him. This one. Uh, that sounds really cool. Yeah. If if, if a dub, dev sees us playing their games and acknowledges that it's kind of <laughs> what it is, and just sits back with popcorn and laughs at us, then yeah, that's a cool guy in my book. Oh, I yeah, love him. Real. Well, I think it is that time. Andy, you are the king of the Kuso again. Uh, Hooray, you get I'm to hold on to the worst. I'm yeah. proud of you. Hit me up, both of you, for prizes because I do need to get those over to you. Uh, and it's easy for me to forget. If anybody watching hasn't gotten one of your prizes and you did earn one, please let me know. Please send me a message on Discord uh, because that happens from time to time, especially when it comes to shipping any of the movies out. Uh, yeah. Anything else before we end? I, I guess I just want to say this was super fun and super wonderful. And I, I honestly, like when I set out for joining Cusco Grande 4, I just wanted to do like a little better than I did in 3. And I didn't expect I'd make it this far. I'm so glad that you were able to get this <laughs> far into it. Oh, Glitch Witch, for some reason, I thought you were a completely new or fun newcomer. We do need your final words, though, because to put on your tombstone, Glitch Witch. Oh, God, what did Andy say before? Andy, is it okay if I steal your words? Because they were kind of perfect. Which words? Um, Whatever shoot. Andy said. <laughs> <laughs> words match for... Um, I got it. Hold on. Um, where is he? Sorry, Andy. Um, gosh. In what context it was, was it? It was something about you thought you were gaming. And then you were dead. But hold on. <laughs> I was gaming until I wasn't. It's only been 24 <laughs> minutes of this. I feel like I've aimed four years. I, okay, I was gaming until I wasn't. <laughs> I exactly like that. Exactly the words I want, if you don't mind me stealing oh, them. You are welcome to them. Okay, <laughs> you will allow plagiarism this time, but next time. Thank you all so much. I want to give a huge shout out as well to Corn Dan, who put a huge amount of work into getting. Uh, the emulator working with all the various systems that we have. To oh, Kate... so this is your fault. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> mo most blame Corn Dan. Uh, thank you as well, Kate, for uh, basically being the most awesome referee ever and making the tough calls when I don't want to. Uh, also, thank you to all the GMs, all the mods uh, who have helped throughout the tournament, the, the refs who have been watching individual streams from time to time. Thank you all so much. And remember, what do I need to remember? Uh, invitations for f uh, the sign up for Crusoe 5. Yes, yes, yes. Sign up for yeah, Crusoe 5. Open. It's Very open until nine. January 15th. <laughs> I already signed up, by the way. I signed up in between games. <laughs> Wait, yeah, really? I signed up too. Oh, you nerd. So, the tournament starts tomorrow, right? What? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, just, I realized I played the most games out of anyone here. I, I lost the first round of the brackets and played every single loser's round. <laughs> oh, yeah, you played a lot. Uh, but, hey, good job. Oh, so, thanks. go, everybody. We... Uh, are going to go raid at Games Done Quick. They are currently doing their classic Games Done Quick 10th anniversary uh, stream. I believe Essentia is going to be streaming either before or after this game. Which, if she's streaming before the current game, then that means that, you know, she already went. I don't know. <laughs> it's not going to work. Okay. One of those. Yeah, so you... I don't know. You might see her. You might not. You... Let, let's go. We okay. gotta get out of here. I'm losing All my right. brain. Everyone go home. Go. Right, Do we have a good raid message? Raid message? I was gaming until I wasn't, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm in for that one. I was yeah, gaming I until I wasn't. Go spread the love with GDQ. And I will try to be around much more, uh, especially since I'm not going to GDQ. Oh, sad day. Oh, bummer. Well... I don't know. I've got a husband with a broken hip. I'm going to stay. Yeah. Oh, you know, that's like the super like smartest move you can make. So I believe in you. All uh, right. Well, I'll excuse it. Uh, yeah. Well, uh. go to everybody. Much love and see you later on. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.